Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 7 of AFM today's topic is international investment appraisal this is the last lecture under investment appraisal because from lecture 8 onwards we will be focusing on risk management all currency risk interest rate risk because this is the last lecture under investment appraisal that is international investment appraisal most of the things that you have done whether your net present value your uh, adjusted present value you have done all those things in the previous lecture will be repeated here the only difference is with some adjustments because it is international that's the only thing and you need a little bit of your understanding of exchange rate which i'm going to introduce in this lecture itself a little not so not in detail because anyway you'll be doing it from lecture 8 onwards risk management how to convert currencies and all but since it is international investment appraisal, you will be having currencies here to exchange currencies, foreign currencies. So, and taxation issues and remittance issues, those issues will come into the picture now. So, here we are going to focus on investment appraisal for international projects. You need to know how to focus foreign exchange rates using various methods, the impact of taxation, intercompany cash flows and remittance restrictions net present value for foreign projects financing how do you finance the foreign projects so let's start with net present value analysis we have already done net present value in lecture one it's the same way you calculate net present value even here also the only difference is now you need to convert it the foreign exchange rate and also with some additional stuff to include so basics are still you have to identify the relevant cash flow all the inflows minus outflows then you have to take the tax and you'll be having tax relief on capital expenditure that is tax allowable depreciation that is TAD you will be still dealing with inflation here but for international investment there are some additional challenges like you have to focus for an exchange rate when it was a domestic net present value locally you don't have to do this but now since it's international you had to now the question you might ask me is ma'am will we get domestic local net present value or international see it's i can't tell you depends sometimes you can get international sometimes you can just get local net present value but you don't have to deal with foreign exchange rate okay you have to be prepared for both second issue this is old this see the additional issues that we are discussing are only applicable for international if it's not international this issues will not come okay so double taxation where you have to pay tax in two company uh, two countries intercompany flows let's say you have a branch in another country the flows that is happening between that branch and this country are intercompany they're not outside party okay for example you might charge a royalty let's say you open a franchise in another country so you are charging royalty that is an intercompany flow royalty management charges and then the fourth challenge is remittance restrictions we are going to go in detail in each of all these four challenges so there are three types of risk now this is this question will come as a discussion question this three risks okay calculation is not there because discussion question also will come okay every area of afm whether it is risk management whether it is acquisition merger whether it is reconstruction whether it is uh, investment appraisal will have a discussion question attached to it. it is just not purely calculation please understand this you need to write as well okay and i always emphasize where you have to write what are the calculation so you don't all have to worry at all okay so this there are three types of risk that a firm stop when firm starts trading in different countries there are three types of risk that a firm is going to face what are the three number one transaction risk number two economic risk number three translation risk what is the difference between these three let's see transaction risk means when you what is it when you do transactions when you do transactions you should have some transaction outside otherwise transaction risk will not come okay so let's say you want to buy something import some goods in three months time but you don't know the exchange rate it might go up or it might go down 
it's a transaction risk because at the end when you convert it you might have more cost or less cost depend on the exchange rate right so it's a risk but this type of risk we can hedge we can protect against this type of way we cannot eliminate entirely but we can hedge by using various derivatives like options future forward that is what we are going to do in the next lecture lecture 8 or lecture 9 right second is economic risk economic risk is long term long term risk okay you need to write you need to know how to write on these things okay they might ask you explain the z type of risk or what type of risk the company is facing whatever the company is given to you in the case study so you should be able to identify economic risk is basically long term okay for example the company's currency value is going down or the con country is facing unstable uh, political issue so all this will affect your foreign exchange rate because of this net present value will suffer right that is something to the country this type of risk you cannot uh, use hedging it's outside your control you cannot do anything third type of risk is translation risk translation risk means whether you do a transaction or not you are going to face this risk how let's say you have a foreign subsidiary okay they are running there nicely okay but when at the end of the financial year when you have to translate the financial statement to your currency there will be some risk some exchange gain or loss will come that is translation risk by translating the financial statements to your home currency there will be a risk now relation you need to know relationship between interest inflation spot and forward rate then only you can focus the foreign exchange rate okay f0 stands for forward rate s0 spot rate s1 is expected future spot rate ib is the see i stands for interest b is the base okay base currency what is this base currency and counter currency i will explain you when we do a question okay through a question i will explain you but just right now keep it that ib stands for interest for base currency i see is interest for counter currency there are two types of currency one is base currency one is counter currency counter currency is the foreign currency base currency is your local currency okay i see h stands for inflation remember h b inflation of the base country base currency sorry h c inflation of the counter currency c stands for counter b stands for base okay now let us go through this diagram after this we are going to do a question we are actually going to focus for an exchange rate all this four okay forget about this downside just look at the up the two boxes on the left and the right up not down forget about the down for a moment what can you think you know that the, the, we the, we solved this right it is known as fisher's effect of fisher's equation now we will convert this to international fisher's effect where we are dealing with old inflation and interest rate that means differences in interest rate of the two country will be equal to the difference in the inflation of the two country that is the meaning of this differences in interest rate is equals to differences in the inflation rate it has to be that is known as international fisher's effect you see 1 plus ic just look at the top box on the left hand side differences in interest rate box 1 plus ic that is 1 plus interest rate of the counter currency divided by 1 plus interest rate of the base currency counter currency comes up base currency is always down if the base currency is down for the interest rate inflation also will work in the same way inflation of the base currency will be down it's the same coming to the down f0 divided by s0 on the left hand side and the right hand side box down we are talking about s1 divided by s0 that is known as expectation theory that means according to expectation theory this two has to be equal what is what two has to be equal the forward rate divided by spot rate equals to expected for spot divided by current spot so in short your forward rate is equals to your expected spot rate 
they are equal okay definitely you will understand this through a question if you are not understanding this box it looks confusing forget about the box we'll solve this through a question so let's do a small question so here you have been given the current exchange rate 1.7025 1.7075 there are two rates this is how they give exchange rate one is known as bid price the other one is known as ask price okay and you have been given the inflation rate for the two countries for three years now using the relationship you have to work out the expected spot rate for the next three years you have been given the inflation okay so what do you do Which formula are you going to use? Tell me that first. You have been given inflation. Please look at the word inflation. The moment you are given the word inflation, the, the formula that you have to use is known as Purchasing Power Parity Theory. You have to use this formula. PPPT formula which stands for purchasing power parity theory okay and the formula is expected spot rate that is s1 equal to your current spot rate that will be given to you multiply by remember this always okay one plus h that is inflation which c counter currency is always in the numerator and in the denominator we have inflation of the base currency that is b but you need to I, you need to understand which country is base and which country is counter uk or us because without that you will not be able to do this okay so tell me if i ask you sometimes you might have to use the midpoint of this too right they might tell you to use the midpoint Tell me. Okay. See, this is how you decide. See the see this one. See the notation. Dollar to one pound. So this one pound, whatever is this, it is priced as pounds in times of pounds. This is known as base currency. Pound is base currency. This is how you decide all this. Whatever is uh, on the right hand side, that currency is the base currency, and this dollar is the counter currency. Always, it's always like this. It's fixed. So, US inflation will come on the top, UK inflation will go down. What is the expected spot rate? 1.7025 or this. You have to choose this or this rate. Okay. But uh, that will be you doing it in exchange rate risk management so, but since here okay they have not told anything okay you can use mid prices also this sometimes they tell that mid prices are used okay so in this case also they have used the mid price of this too how do you find the mid price 1.7025 and you might be telling me why mid price because that is the more accurate compared to the two extremes i mean you don't have to know the reason just knowing it that you can use this rate is enough okay first find the mid price but in the exam you don't have to worry because they will clearly tell you use mid price or not or they will give you as one specific rate only this two rate comes when we are using forward option future uh, swap for those things okay in your exchange rate risk management it will come but for this one where you are just doing uh exchanging sorry predicting exchange rate just for your net present value they will only give you one rate or they will tell you that this is the mid rate or they will give you two rates and tell you to use a mid rate something like that clearly they will tell you so now use it in the formula s0 this is s0 this is your s0 
current spot rate. So for year one, if you have to predict 1.7050 multiplied by 1 plus the inflation of the US because US is the counter currency. What is it? 5%. 5%. So 0 0.05 divide by 1 plus the inflation of the UK in year 1 that is 2% so 0 0.02 close bracket it will be equal to 1.7551 please do this calculation along with me and just see are you getting 1.7551 or not don't just copy paste it it will not help you then we'll go to year 2 when you do year 2 you have to use this rate and bring it here the cycle keeps on going so it will be 1.7551 okay again inflation will be of us which is 3% and for uk it is 4% 1.7382 third year third year again this you will bring here this will become the current spot so 1.7382 Multiply by the inflation of the US that is 4% in third year and UK it is also 4% which will be equal to 1.7382. If you see the two inflations are same, that's why you see these two rates are also same 17382 and 17382. So these are the three rates. So when you're converting the cash flow of year one, year two, year three, you have to use this three exchange rate this, this, and this. That's the reason we do this right so that's it now we'll be going to calculate cross exchange rates now we are moving on to cross rate calculation here you might not be given the exchange rate for a particular currency that you are looking for but instead you will be given a relationship that that currency has with a different currency basically three currencies will be given now so indirectly you are finding through this you are getting this and then you are getting the other so rather than finding directly now you are finding it indirectly that is the meaning of cross rate calculation okay for example you have been given the rate between dollar and pounds and euro and pounds but you want to find dollar and euro okay so how can you find the rate between dollar and euro by dividing the dollar and pound by the euro and pound you understanding because when you divide the euro by pound from the dollar by euro uh, pounds pound pound gets cancelled do the cross multiplication pound pound gets cancelled and what is remaining is dollar divided by euro if you are not understanding this also no problem we have a question for it so let's do a question on cross rate calculation so here you have been given an example of cross rate a uk company has a greek subsidiary which is to purchase materials costing hundred thousand dollar now the net present value is calculated in euros but you are not provided with euro and dollar you need euro and dollar right because overseas is calculated in euros you have to convert that euros to dollar because uh, the material costing is in dollar before you can convert it into euros you need an euro dollar exchange rate okay because you have been given the price in dollar but you need to convert it into euros because euro is your country but the rates that you have given is dollar and pounds euro and pounds but you want euro and dollar you understanding how do you do this now calculate the value of the purchase in euros so they have to, already told you the currency When you are doing like this, you have to break down this into two stages. To, in two stages, you have to calculate this. First, convert the purchase into pounds. See, 
easiest thing okay what is the starting currency which currency do you start it looks very confusing dollar euro pounds where to start starting is look at the price here there's only one figure that is given to you that is a material cost how much it is it is in which currency it is in dollar it is in dollar so first convert that dollar into pounds because euros you cannot convert because you do not have dollar and euro sign so directly you cannot convert the dollar to euro first convert it to pounds you are given the do dollar and the pounds uh, exchange rate this one so first convert that dollar into pounds convert dollar into pounds this you can do 100000 okay so now the question often asked is whether to multiply or whether to divide the rate this is often a question which is asked and i'm sure when i go to the risk management in the next lecture you guys are going to you know ask this question like frequently easiest way is do like this okay dollar pounds 1.9 what does it mean how do you read it you should know how to read exchange rates by the way this means 1.9 dollar is equals to one pound whatever is on the right hand side it is the base currency remember it will always be one it will always sometimes they give like this 1.90 equal to one pound this is easy to understand but in this case they are writing dollar like this and then they are writing 1.90 still is the same thing that means 1.9 dollar is equals to one pound we'll write it here one we'll write dollar and we'll write pounds this is how i do okay and just see 1.90 dollar is equals to one pound and what are the prices you are given is hundred thousand so hundred thousand dollar will be equal to how many pounds what do you do that how do you uh, do you need to divide this by this to get it because when it's the same currency you divide and different currency you multiply because this is hundred thousand is in dollar this 1.9 is in dollar so same currency divide always it's a rule different currency we'll, we'll have questions for that also where we multiply don't worry it's not always divide or not always multiply never suggest it sometimes division sometimes multiplication depending on the currency in this case it is division different currency multiply so it will be 100000 divide by 1.9 which will give you the pounds in short if one pound is equals to 1.9 dollar how many pounds do you need to have 100 dollar that is the meaning of this so what is it convert it and tell me 52 6 32 this is pounds but you need in euro so convert the pounds into euro now into euros you are given the pound and the euro rate the second one this also is the same thing 1.45 euro is equals to one pound in both the pound is the base currency okay remember so here also it's in now you have pounds the rate that is given to in euro now nah, now we got that thing so wait we just okay euro pounds 1.45 euro is equals to one pound okay now you already have it in pounds 52 6 32 you need to get it in euro so you say this is in euro this is in pounds you want in euro it's not in the same currency it's always cross like this earlier it was on the same line up and down that's why you divide now it's different so you multiply you multiply now it's different you are given you have pounds the rate is given in euro different rate multiply this is what i was telling you now you cannot divide now you need to multiply to get it in euro so 52 632 multiply by 
is equals to how many euros? 76, 316. Okay. The same question can be solved in another way, which is which is more uh, which is more you have to apply in the exam. This is easy, but only if one transaction is there, hundred thousand. Remember, if there are many transactions in the exam, rather than going through all this, can get the rate itself, the cross rate. So there is an alternative method, and you should know this alternative method. I would suggest alternative method. This is time saving. Find the cross rate only. How do you find the cross rate? See, what do you want? Euro over dollar. Euro over dollar you want, no? Okay. You want euro over dollar. Let's see the raise that you have. You are given dollar divided by pounds. And you are given euro divided by pounds. In both the base currency is pounds. So, but you want dollar and you want euro. So, isn't there any way that you eliminate the pounds? Eliminate the pounds and just get the dollar and euro. How? But your euro should be on the top. Remember, euro should be on the top. It's euro divided by dollar. So, when euro is in the top, keep this as it is because this has euro on the top and pounds. Do something with this. What do you do? You can divide. Divide it. Euro divide uh, over pounds. Okay. Divide dollar by pounds. When you divide, what do you do? You can do cross multiplication. This is maths. I'm this is pure maths. Do the reciprocal. So euro over pounds remains like that. Do the cross multiplication. Pounds comes on the top now and your dollar goes down when you multiply. Dividing this means is equal to this only. This, this both are equal. So pounds and pounds cancels off. Euro remains on the top and dollar is in the bottom. So it becomes euro divided by dollar. That's what you want. If you are very good in maths with these things, cross division and all, multiplication will be very good in this thing. This here you need a little understanding of maths not your afm here maths only will help you out so know a little bit of maths if you don't know you can watch youtube videos ask your friends but do a little bit of it is it will help you a lot okay that i cannot teach you here obviously from basics and all but this is how it works dollar divided by euro that's what you want right so now we'll take the rates okay we'll take the rates is better Euro divided by pounds. Euro divided by pounds. What is the rate? 1.45. Sorry, we want dollar. Divide by euro. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I got mistake. It's we want dollar on the top. Divide by euro. Okay, so anyway. Dollar for euro that means dollar divided by pounds okay the rate was 1.9 1.9 dollars equals to one pound this divide by euro divided by pounds euro and pound the rate was 1.45 as simple as this so what is the rate One point three z three. Sorry, 1.3103. This is the cross rate. This is the cross rate. Using this rate, what was the transaction value given? $100,000. This rate is in dollar or in euro? First, find out. This is dollar. This is euro. This is 100,000. You divide or multiply? You divide. And the amount that you get is in euro. 76318. Compare this with this. 76318. 
and here you are getting 76316 difference is very small very small you will get similar answer only but this first one method first method is a longer method it will waste a lot of time so i will not suggest that i will use the second method alternative method find the cross rate and then get the value of 100000 again i will explain that a little bit why div division see whenever you are given a rate like this you know 1.3103 this rate always applies to this one on the top the dollar always look like this whatever the rate you get this is known as 1.3103 dollar equal to 1 euro this is the meaning of this and you are given 100000 dollar so 100000 dollar this is also in dollar divided same rate If you are not understanding it, watch my video multiple times. This part, this portion, watch it multiple times until you get the reason. Okay, but you need to get it very perfect. If you get this thing at this stage perfect, my later lectures will be very easy for me to deliver to you because it's full of uh, calculation, translation to this currency to that currency using the correct rate. Okay. Now let us go to the impact of. inflation taxation and all inflation rates okay so same way how we have done for the domestic net present value even for the foreign the international net present value we need to adjust for the inflation rates in the foreign country so you need to calculate the inflation rates okay in this question the question is not there but let me read the question for you Inflation is currently 80% in Brazil. Although the government hopes to reduce it by each year by 25% of the previous year's rate. Okay, so 20 by 25% each year they will be reducing it of the previous year's rate. So you will see after reduction of 25%, it will be 75, 0.75. So 80% of 0.75 is 60%. On this again you are taking 75%, 45, and then on 45 you are taking 75, and this is for four years. Okay, what is the inflation for the uh, over the next four years in Brazil? That is the question. So 34. On this 34 again 25. Uh, I mean 0.75 after reduction from 25%, which is 26%. Now or There is another way of calculating inflation. For example, 80% and you take 0.74 to the power of 4 because for four years directly in one go, which is 25.3, which is very close to 26%. And this is more accurate also because here when you were doing it, you were using the round up figure. Okay. Now we'll be doing test your understanding too. The current rate of inflation. In Costovia, sixty-five percent. Garmen is reducing this by ten percent of the previous rate. The exchange rate is given as one forty-four peso to one US dollar. Inflation rate in US over the next three years is expected to be four, three point five, and three percent. Calculate the exchange rate of the peso against the US dollar for the next three years. So you have been given the inflation rate of the two countries. Using those inflation of the two countries, now you have to calculate the exchange rate. Okay, which theory? Purchasing power parity. Okay, there are two things, two steps. Step one, you need to first find the inflation rate in the Costovia over the next three years because we know for in the US it's four, three point five, and three percent. So, using the reduction by ten percent of sixty five percent, you have to find of Costovia first. So first find. find the inflation in costovia so year 1 year 2 year 3 first year it is 65% and they told 10% reduction that means remaining is 90% which will be 58.5% on that 58.5% again 90% which is 52.7% on 
on that 52.7 percent 90 which is 47.4 percent now we are doing step two find exchange rate using the formula what's what formula there are so many formulas there you have been given the inflation okay always see what information is given to you you already given the inflation so with the inflation you have to find the exchange rate so which formula is that it is the spot okay i will just write s into one plus the inflation of the counter currency divided by one plus inflation of the base currency this is the formula always when inflation is there so using this you will know year one year two and year three what is the spot that is given to you it is 144 peso so 144 is the starting point 144 into one plus the inflation of what which country c is the counter currency which is peso in this case because this is base currency whichever is quoted as one or you can say the currency which is on the right in this case us is the base currency cost away as the counter currency so counter currencies inflation is sorry this is us counter currencies inflation is this 58.5 percent for the first year and 4% for US. So for cost of US currencies will come in the numerator and US which is the base currency their inflation will come in the denominator. So it will be 0 0.585 divided by 1 plus 0 0.04 which will be equal to 220. Using that 2, see 220 will come as a spot rate then 1 plus 0 0.527 divided by 1 plus 0 0.035 which will be 325 then for the third year 325 multiplied by 1 plus the inflation of this which is 0 0.474 divided by 1 plus 0 0.03 which is equals to 465 so this is how you calculate exchange rate using inflation rate from inflation we are moving on towards the impact of taxation intercompany cash flows and remittance restrictions first we are going to tackle taxation relating to taxation there are three scenarios that is there in the exam one could be home country may have a tax rate that is lower than same as or higher than the foreign country okay either both might have same tax rate either home country might have lower tax rate or either they might have higher than the foreign country's tax rate the question will always assume a double tax treaty sometimes most of the time most question that i have seen they always write that there's a double tax treaty but wherever it's not written you have to assume in the exam that double tax treaty is there okay that means project will always be taxed at the higher rate so now let us do a question on this we'll illustrate how taxation is used or could be applied in the exam so in this three scenarios okay we'll see which at what tax rate you will be charged in scenario a you profits will be taxed at 40 percent scenario b it will be at 33 percent okay which is in us and project c okay see what will be the rate of the tax on a project carried down in us by a uk company we are worried we are in us company could be anything so in us will be taxed at 40 percent that is a higher rate here also it is 33 percent same but when us is having a lower tax rate than uk how do you do how do you work out on the third scenario project could be taxed at 33 percent because we told that it will be taxed at the higher rate but remember 
25% of it will be taxed in US, 8% will be taxed in UK. Total will be 33% only, that is the highest it can go. But out of that 30, it's not entirely 33% will be taxed in UK. No, 25% will be in US, the balance 8% is in UK only, rather than paying 25 in US and 33 in UK. That is that is the meaning of a double tax treaty. It's an advantage for you. They are giving an advantage that just because you have paid 25% in US out of 33, only 8%, the balance you have to pay in UK. That is the meaning of it. But in the other two scenarios, it's not an issue because both, especially in section B, it's easy because both are 33. But you'll be paying it in US because you are a US company. I mean, the project is in US. Always see where the project is and which country. At that country, you have to pay the tax. And regarding the scenario A, okay, you will be paying the full 40% in US. That means in UK, you don't pay any tax because you have already paid 40% in US. That's the meaning of it. So now from taxation, we are moving on towards intercompany cash flows. You will be having intercompany cash flows, okay? Intercompany cash flows examples are like transfer price, royalties, management charges. They can also affect tax, okay? And you should know these examples of intercompany cash flows. Anything might come up. You might have transfer price to deal with. You might have royalties to deal with. You might have management charges to deal with anything. So how do you deal with it? In the exam, you always have to assume intercompany cash flows are allowable for tax unless they state the other ways that they are not question will tell you but if the question does not say anything the question is silent on it you have to assume it is allowable for tax allowable tax means you have to deduct it tax has to be deducted from it okay and if an intercompany cash flow is allowable for tax relief overseas there will be a corresponding tax liability on the income in the home country remember if you are getting tax relief overseas, you have to pay the tax in the home country. There will be a tax liability in the home country for that income. For intercompany cash flow, this is not any cash flow. That means if it's transfer price, royalties, management charges, you have to be very careful. We are definitely going to do a question on this. So don't worry. Then you need to assume that tax authority will only allow arm's length open market prices for tax relief. Because sometimes what happens is this transfer price and all, you can artificially increase or decrease. They might not be at arm's length or the prices which are there in the open market. It might be too high or too low. So for those things, if tax authorities comes to know the prices are too high or too low, they do not usually allow it for the tax relief. Okay, they don't. They don't allow for tax relief for the artificial high or low transfer price. Now, transfer price. Okay, transfer price means price is charged by one part of a company to another part of the company. They are the same part of the company only. For example, parent is selling to subsidiary or subsidiary is selling to the parent. Or one division is selling to another division of the same company. That is known as transfer pricing. The price that is charged among the two department or parent or subsidiary, that is known as transfer pricing. Okay. Company A sells components to company B. While company B sells marketing services to company A, it's two things, it would be two way. Now let us look, look this diagram. Okay. How tax can have an impact to understand why transfer price high and low will have an impact on tax. Let's say company A is having a higher tax than compared to company B. Right? Look at the tax rate. Company A is paying 50%, whereas company B is only paying 20%. So if I ask you this question, without looking the diagram, tell me which company will have charge higher price, high transfer price. Is it company A or company B? Company A will charge low, low transfer price and company B will charge higher transfer price. Because if you charge high transfer price, remember you have to pay more tax. So you usually do not want to pay tax in a country where already the tax rate is high. Otherwise your tax rate will be, tax will be too high. So you want to reduce the price. Whereas in a company where the tax rate is low, you don't mind increasing the price there because tax is low. So what are you doing by charging, by increasing or decreasing the transfer price? You are driving down the tax to the other country. For example, if you're having a high tax rate in your country, what are you doing? By charging low transfer price, you are transferring it to the other country. 
that means you don't want to pay high tax in the, your country so you are reducing the transfer price that's what is happening now let us do a question on this so in this question a project is carried out by a u.s subsidiary of a uk company and it is due to earn revenue of 100 million dollar in us in year two with the cost of 30 million us dollar royalty payment is 10 million which is made by the us subsidiary to the uk assume taxes paid 25 percent in us and 33 percent in uk assume a forecast with the spot rate spot rate is given to you looks like lots to do here right how do you start this question start with the revenue always okay revenue and then the cost so this is for year two revenue okay so what is okay let's drop down the millions dollar million everything is in same currency everything is in dollar you have to convert it into uk obviously because you are a uk company this is a foreign country us right all this are carried in the us subsidiary in us everything is in dollar you need to convert it in pounds but first let us finish everything in dollar since everything is given in dollar so do not predict the exchange rate and start converting all the dollars one by one to uk pounds that's not the way you have to do it will consume a lot of time rather whatever the cash flow that you get the final cash flow that you will be converting using the spot rate using the exchange rate to predict to convert dollar to pounds not one by one royalty payment also you are converting revenue also you are converting cost also you are converting that's not how you do it so first let uh, let us write everything in dollar revenue is given as 100 we are dropping down the million so just write 100 then we are going to deduct the cost cost is 30 million deduct 30 royalties also you have to deduct that is also a cost who is paying royalty to whom here royalty payments of 10 million will be paid by the us subsidiary to the uk so from the point of us we are now from the point of us only so for us it's a cost but for uk it's an income okay so 10 now after you deduct everything you get pre-tax profit before tax which is 60 million after that deduct take tax and deduct tax is 25 okay now good question which you are paying 25 percent in uk okay i know early we told we are going to pay the high percentage that is three percent 33 percent of course we are going to pay 33 percent but how are we going to pay that 33 percent 25 percent in uk eight percent only in uk 25 percent in us sorry so as it is take the us tax rate and apply it on the pre-tax profit which is 25 percent of us tax 25 percent us tax 25 percent on 60 which is 15 and you get 45 which is okay this 45 will be sent to the parent remit to the parent you have to send this back to the parent now you are going to convert this 45 using exchange rate exchange rate has been given to you 1.5 but divide or multiplication 45 is in dollar 1.5 if you see this is also in dollar so you have to divide okay divide by or here i will write divide by 1.5 zero after you divide 45 by 1.5 zero whatever you get it is pound cash flow now which is 30 after that it's not over there are some more things that you have to do you have to see whether in uk are you having any inflow or an outflow in that country itself this is just a remittance from the parent or a subsidiary has remitted to the parent other than that you might be having some uk royalty don't forget i told you royalties and cost for us but uk is receiving royalty so that royalty needs to be added it's an inflow it's an income for uk but which okay you need to go back and see this royalty is 10 
divide this also by 1.5 to get it in terms of us uk which is 6.7 when it comes to uk 6.7 so this 6.7 needs to be added after that uk tax don't forget uk tax needs to be deducted how much how much uk tax 8% the difference okay 8% 33 minus 25 okay can you take the uk tax as it is no when you are doing uk tax separate working is there for that you are ne you need a working let us go a little down keep some space and write uk tax computation uk tax Here, you have to first convert everything to pounds and then you have to apply the UK percentage. For example, here, this pre tax profit 60 million profit you are getting from US. You have to convert this into pounds because there will be UK tax on that profit also. So, convert the 60 million. US dollar dollar 60 million that's the profit divide by 1.5 which is in pounds it will be 40 million then after that eight percent on what you have to apply After you get this profit, you have to apply 8% of UK taxes 8% into that 40 million in pounds that you have just got here, which will be pound 3.2 million. Okay, but this 3.2 you have to add something with it. What is it? The 33% UK tax on royalty. Remember, when you are paying royalty, you have to pay 33% in that royalty. Okay. Double tax comes only in the profit when you have to charge on the profit. For example, if you see this profit, this 60 million profit, on the 60 million, you are paying 25% UK tax also, and you are paying 8% of UK tax also. That is that is the reason for double tax treaty but other than that other stuff when you're having it in uk you have to pay the uk tax for example the royalty that you are receiving from the us subsidiary in uk you have to pay 33 percent that is the uk tax there eight percent will not apply it is only for the profit so 33 percent uk tax on royalty what is the royalty we have just calculated it which is 6.7 here on that 6.7 Okay, take 33% zero. Okay, 33%, which will be 2.2 million. So add 3.2 and 2.2. That is your total tax, 5.4 million. This is your UK tax. Okay, this 5.2 you have to deduct from here. After with the cash, the remittance that you get add royalty deduct uk tax but for uk tax separately you have to do the working which is 31.3 million in pounds and this is your after tax cash flow after deducting tax so that's how you do it remember everything at the end needs to be in your home country what what is your country in this case this is uk you are having a US subsidiary. You can have subsidiary in any country, but at the end, everything has, needs to be in pounds. Even in your exam, always check what is your home country because at the end, currency, cash flow, everything needs to be in your country back. Okay. You cannot leave it in foreign currency terms. That's how you do a question. Now, let us take the remittance restrictions and all and exchange controls into account.
remittance restrictions so earlier questions we have seen that we can remit the cash flow entirely whatever we have got in us subsidiary they are remitting it back to the parent company that is uk but in reality there are so many restrictions that the foreign com uh, foreign countries government can put right they might put a limit that you cannot remit entirely in your home country to or back to the parent company there must be something which is kept in the foreign country right so because of that they might put some restrictions for remittance for example that this is a limit up to this much you can remit up to this much of the profit you can remit to the parent company so because of this what happens what is the impact the impact is this restriction can change the extra tax that is payable by the parent company because of this restriction now let's do a small question and see in this question a uk company that means you are the uk company okay is appraising a new us project and you have been given everything in dollar the us profit the pre tax us profit that is 3 million uh, sorry yeah 3 million dollar 4 million dollar and 6 million dollar in any one year only 50% of the profit can be remitted back to the parent and the block profit can be released back to the parent in the year after the end of the project us tax rate is 15 uk tax rate is 25 exchange rate is been given calculate the additional uk tax payable each year because in us tax rate is only 15% that means in uk you have to pay the balance that is 10% only but you need to calculate the additional uk tax payable each year now it will change because you have already remitted 50% of the profit in any one year okay so now how do you approach this question we don't need year zero okay first start with year 1 2 and 3 okay start with the us profit before tax us dollar profit before tax just take the number as it is 3 4 and 6 million apply the us tax on it the profit which is 15% 15% of 3 15% of 4 15% of 6 which will be 0.45 0.6 and 0.9 so after you deduct it what you get is us profit after tax p a t which is 2.55 3.4 5.1 now blocked funds right they told that blocked funds will be released back to the parent in a, in the year after the end of the project so we are going to first start with a blocked fund which is 50% okay 50% of what 50% of the us profit after tax this theory So that means fifty percent of two point five five, fifty percent of three point four, and fifty percent of two point five five. Sorry, five point one. So fifty percent of two point five five is one point two seven five. Fifty percent of three point four is one point seven zero zero. And fifty percent of five point one zero is two point five five. You can add a zero if you want three digit decimal. This needs to be deducted. Okay. Now, remitted to the parent. How much can be remitted to the parent? 
whatever the blocked fund it is 1.275 deduct the blocked funds from the US profit after tax and you get it that means 2.5 minus this 3.4 minus this 5.10 minus 2.55 which is 2.55 no I'm sorry you don't deduct you just take as as this one the block funds only are going to remit it to the parent no so take this and at the end of the project that is year 4 it will be released which so add this the 3 which will be 5.525 in year 4 now the amount remitted that will be in pounds now this one in dollar to convert the dollar to pounds you need the exchange rate for all the three years how much is it what is the exchange rate 1.3 Assume that the exchange rate will be 1.3 for the foreseeable future. That means it will be 1.3 only. You don't have to predict every year. It will be 1.3, 1.3, 1.3. That means you divide. You divide your this once from 1.3. We'll go and do our working here. 1.275 divided by 1.3 which will be 0 0.981 same way for this so divide everything by 1.3 all the years cash flow this will be 0 0.981 this is in pounds okay 1.308 then we have 1.962 and 5.5 525 divided by 1.3 will be 4.250. Now, extra tax payable. What is extra tax payable? How do you get the extra tax payable? Remember, you have to pay extra taxes 10% because 25 and 15 you are paying in US, so 10% only in UK. Out of that, only 50% you can remit. 50% of what? The US profit after tax. What is the US profit after tax? That is all this. I will highlight it for you. This. You have to take 50% of that, which will be 2.55 for year one divide this whole thing by 1.30 because you have to convert it into pounds and tell me how much you are getting it will be how much 0, there is something wrong with the tax extra tax payable there is something wrong this is not profit after tax you have to take profit before tax for us this one three four and six on this because remember see here on this you are paying 15 percent so extra tax will be that you have to pay 
ten percent and only fifty percent of it you can remit. So ten percent into fifty into three, four, and six. So three. And you need to divide by one point three because it needs to be converted into pounds. Which will be zero point one one five. Same way for the other two also you can do. Everything remains same except the three becomes four and four becomes six for year three. So like that it will be zero point one five four and zero point two three one. And for this both year, how much it will be? Because I think for, for fourth year we don't have a profit before tax. Fourth year it is add. Fourth year is just the addition of all this. That is 0 0.5. Okay. So that's it for this question. Now we'll be moving on towards the exchange controls. Now we are moving to exchange rate and this question is for discussion theory part, not calculation. Okay, there will be some exchange controls that might happen. For example, the government might ban the use of the foreign currency within the country or they might ban the locals from possessing foreign currency or governments might restrict currency exchange right restricting currency exchange to government approved exchanges exchange rate might be fixed or there might be restrictions on the amount of the currency that could be imported and exported if this happens then the tax and everything changes but there are ways to deal with it and you should know this as well because this also has been asked as a discussion question in the exam right strategies to deal with exchange controls management charges parent company might have management charges for the subsidiary company for the cost that has been incurred in the foreign operation another way is transfer pricing they can adjust the transfer pricing royalty payment which can be imposed on the foreign subsidiary by the parent company Loans parent company might give loan to foreign subsidiary or foreign company might give foreign subsidiary might give loan to parent company Okay, if the parent company is the one who is lending that money to the foreign subsidiary Okay, interest rate can be set at such a level that ensures that Required amount of money is transferred back to the parent company through the subsidiary Okay, this is little bit of manipulation that you are doing but um, anyhow these are some strategies now working capital okay what about working capital you need working capital in international projects also right so normally it is assumed that working capital requirement for the foreign project will be increased by the annual rate of the inflation in that country now we'll see a small question on that because this is very important whenever net present value has been asked whether it is international projects or domestic projects working capital is always asked Okay, and you need to know to how to calculate that increase. So let's see. Okay, so now you are heading towards working capital calculation. You have been given for six years the percentages, the inflation in South America. Okay, four million pesos in working capital are required immediately for a project. And you have been given the inflation rates now identify the working capital flows for the net present value calculation okay so now you need to start with year zero year zero one two three four five and six what is the working capital that is required immediately that means in year zero it is four thousand okay and let's go by the inflation 
inflation will be one there will be no inflation in year zero so total wait total working capital for year zero will be 4000 only because 4000 into one is 4000 that means how many you are uh, working capital injection okay injection how much working capital do you need are you putting it's an outflow remember 4000 whenever working capital question is asked this is how you work it out starting with your zero okay now moving on to the next so next year when you are taking it just take the percentages six four five four three four okay so inflation column we can set 1 1.06 1.04 1.05 1.04 1.03 and 1.04 and we need another column seven because working capital will always be released at the end of the project So, what do you do? Starting with 4000, 4000 multiplied by like this, you go, which is 4240. In Excel, I can show you better. Again, this you multiply by 1.04, it will be 4410. This you multiply by 1.05, it will be so like that you keep going. The previous year's working capital you multiply with the next year's inflation. That's what you do. And make sure that you are getting this figure, okay? 4816, 4960, 5158. And you stop there. Now, you don't, this other total working capital, okay? You don't need this figure. This figure is there for you to show the increase, how much it increased from 4000 to 4240. You, we are focused on that increase, incremental amount only we want. Here, 240. Then from 4 to 40 to 4, 4, 1, 0. What is the increase? 170. Then from this to this, how much it increased? 221. We are already worried about the incremental amount always. 4, 6, 3, 1 to 4, 8, 1, 6. 185. 4, 8, 1 to 4, 9, 60. 144. 4, 9, 60 to this one. 198 and finally finally just add all up add this all up your working capital will be 5158 and if you see this this will be same just to make sure that this incremental are correct what do you do add all with the 4000 I mean, add all the incremental amount and check whether it is adding up to this 5158 or not if this and this okay these two boxes are different that means you are wrong it should always be same this is how you check okay and your working capital requirement is this so all this every year one two three four five six this are your working capital so in your working capital in the cash flow you are going to put this items 240 170 221 185 144 and 198 now we are moving towards the net present value calculations now there are two methods to calculate net present value for international projects okay make sure that you know both the methods but in the exam you will be asked only one method and most of the time it is the method uh, let's see i don't know which one is for what but i will show you which method is most used in the exam you must have seen it if you have seen the past paper but anyway let's see method one and these are the steps to calculate first you estimate the projects cash flow post tax in the overseas currency do not convert in your currency overseas in the overseas currency you get the tax cash flow post tax after deduction tax the cash flow then you convert the flow to the home currency after that you add the home country's cash flow example their their tax and all after that you discount the home after you have converted it to the home country you then use the company's cost of capital to discount that is method one okay and method two is you estimate the cash flow in the overseas currency 
this is similar to uh, method one also the step one is similar in both difference comes in step two what is it now you convert the company's cost of capital itself do not convert the cash flow using the exchange rate you convert the company's cost of capital to overseas cost of capital companies uh, to overseas cost of capital yeah and how do you do that using interest irp irp stands for interest rate parity why interest rate parity because you will be given the interest rate of the two uh, the two country okay they will tell you this is the interest rate of this country so using those two interest rate you can calculate the cost of capital of the overseas step three using that only that cost of capital you adjust the net present value in the foreign currency itself here you do not convert the net present value to home currency keep it in the overseas currency only the cost of capital you changed after that once you get the net present value in the overseas using the cost of capital now convert it to sterling equivalent that one net present value only you will convert into sterling that means in your home country the local currency after that any present value of additional home country flows like tax and all you add okay one more step is here compared to method one so let's do a question using both the methods before i give you the pro forma the set pro forma which you can go through for an international net present value test your understanding four so here we are going to calculate uh, using one of the two methods the net present value where we are going to discount the annual cash flow in pounds you have been given it the in rm okay so this is a manufacturing company based in uk and this red mat is a politically stable country it will cost 5 million dollar and it is expected to post tax cash flows as follows so this is the initial investment 5 million and this is the inflows okay now real interest rates in two countries are the same they expected to remain the same for the period of the project that means for all the four years they will remain the same okay current spot rate is two per one pound risk free rate is seven percent and nine percent in uk company requires a uk return from this project 16 percent that means vac is 16 percent that is the meaning of this in uk right now how are we going to start this question you know net present value how we start right is the same thing but before that you need to find out the exchange rate using what this time you are not given the inflation this time you are given the interest rate of the two country seven percent and nine percent so using this two interest rate we can find out the exchange rate that is known as irp interest rate parity sorry this is p okay so let us first do that I will write the steps for you so that you can do it calculation of exchange rates now in the exam when you do this question you need to write it what you are doing okay using irp is enough that is interest rate parity so you have to do for four years year one year two year three and then year four okay you have been given the exchange rate as two okay so starting with it two into what is the exchange uh, interest rate in okay now you need to understand what is the base and what is the counter currency i know i think by now you must be a little better in that to identify so you can immediately identify that seven percent this one is the counter currency and uk pound is the base currency okay by looking at this spot rate you can identify so that means the interest rate of you multiply by the interest rate of red met that is 1.07 and you divide it by the uk's interest rate that is 1.09 okay which will be 1.9633 okay remember when you're planning to keep this as four digit like after four decimal places others also you need to keep the same consistency has to be there now that rate 
will become the opening spot rate for year two. So using that rate again, this will remain the fraction will remain the same 1.07, 1.09 only every year. 1.9273. Now third year also it will be 1.9273. 1.07 divided by 1.09 equal to 1.8919 and fourth year 1.8919 multiplied by 1.07 divided by 1.09 equal to 1.8572. So you have got the four exchange rate. Now you don't need anything else. Everything is set. Just make the table with the cash inflow and outflow and just convert using this four exchange rate that's what you have to do okay so here you have you need one zero okay initial for initial investment two three and four keep some space in between you can even draw lines if you want okay cash flow okay so cash flow you are writing it this in which currency you need to write the currency it's very important that you write in which currency rm dollar in thousand Okay, so they told 5 million is the initial investment. So you are going to drop down the three zeros and just write 5,000, which is an outflow, so put bracket. Next, write all the inflows has been already given to you, 1,500, 9,000, 2,000, right? all this you can just write. Okay, in the same line only, 1,500, 1,900, 2,500, and 2,700. Now, what else exchange rate because you have been only given one cash flow there's no inflow outflow nothing else so just use the exchange rate okay in this case it will be two why two that is the opening this one which is already given to you this two that is the current spot rate that means for year zero also it will be the spot rate remember in year zero you only don't discount but exchange rate, yes, exchange rate will apply in year zero also. It is only the discount rate that does not apply in year zero. So do not get confused why we do two for year zero. Why should two not be from year one? We just now found this is year one. So use all those 1.9633, 1.9273, 1 1.8919. This is from your working above. All this figure we are just taking here, you know, dropping here. And then 1.8572. This you will be doing it in Excel, so it will be easy. Right after you convert, also you have to write which currency cash flow in which currency. Now it will be in pounds. So you divide or you multiply. This is in RM, exchange rate is in RM, divide 2500. 5000 divided by 2000. Sorry, not 2000, this is 2, 2.00 divided by 2, so 2500. So you just divide the exchange rate by the cash flow. 1321 and 1454. Four. Okay, now you need to discount, remember. You need to discount using what? Present value at 16% because you guess VAC is 16%. Okay, so it's one, I told you no discount. Okay, then 16% using the discount factor table, you can get this 862, 0 0.743, 0 0.641, and 0 0.552. Okay, present value, discount it. You just multiply by the discount and get the figure 2500 659 733 847 803 so this are the present value okay just add all the present value and get the net present value which will be in pounds 542,000. and in your exam I was talking about the method, right? I was telling which method. This is the method. Method number one, which is used. This is known. This is method one. This is the method which is very used in the exam. Very much used. But we'll see according to method two also. 
we'll do this question and we have to get the same net present value even if it's not exactly same because due to rounding figures and all at least it will be similar very close to it okay so now let's do that what do you need to do you just need to convert the vac the 16 percent vac you cannot use so that you need to find out discount rate so discount rate also how will you change using what same same using irpp okay method two irp so according to this okay your this is the formula one plus the vac or the first interest rate divide by one plus the interest rate of the second i mean the the you can say this is the foreign country and this is the domestic country's interest rate equal to spot divide by forward spot or you can even write uh, expected future spot it does not matter it's the same thing okay so now you know what is spot and you know what is forward spot you know the interest of one country you just need the interest of the second country so 1 plus 16 percent right so 0 0.16 divided by 1 plus interest of dollar we want to find out which we don't know spot we know what is the spot it is 2 divided by forward spot forward spot means the next year's spot what is it for year one okay for year one just now we have found out it is 1.9633 that is the meaning of expected feature forward spot 1.9633 that means the difference between the exchange rate from year 0 to 1 should be equal to the interest rate between the two country. This is the meaning of this. This always you have to use whenever interest rate is given, the spot and the future spot is given. Okay. This is very rarely used in the exam. This method, I have not seen a question, I, but be prepared for it. So make this the subject of the equation from here onwards. It's your maths. Okay, pure maths. So keep 1 plus interest rate of dollar on the one side okay and bring this on the other side it becomes cross multiplication so 1 plus 0 0.16 multiply by 1.9633 divided by 2 okay after that just if you want to find out with this whole equation bring the one and it becomes minus one which will be if you calculate put it in your calculator and check it will be 13.87 percentage at least that you should be able to do it on your own so once you get this percentage now what do you do convert all the cash flow using 13.87 just use this as a discount factor to discount your cash flow which is already in rm so it will be like this year zero one two three four cash flow in rm dollar five thousand we are dropping down the three zeros okay one thousand five hundred one thousand nine hundred same cash flow but this time we are not converting the cash flow we are just discounting it using the discount factor 13.87 percent which is one this discount factor if you want to get it from the table discount factor table you will not be able to get it because you only get for the whole number either 13 percent or 14 percent you can use our excel for this your excel will help you i will show you later on okay but the formula is this one divided by one plus 13.87 percentage okay you just increase this to the power if for first year it will be one second year it will be to the power two third year it will be to the power three fourth year it will be to the power four that's it and you will get this figure you should be able to get this figure from it this is the reason why you should know both the manual as well as from the table the figure 0 0.678 0 0.594 after that the present value okay just multiplying the present value 1317, 1465, 
add all what is it 1081 but this 1081 is in rm convert it into into pounds just divide it by two no need to predict exchange rate for all the five years four years sorry and you will get 541,000 net present value if you see this method 2 541 and method 1 what was the present value using method 1 542 so the difference is only very small and that difference is due to rounding if you use the exact number without rounding you will get exactly the same net present value but it's okay in the exam you don't have to get uh, you will not be doing both the methods okay don't waste time also to see whether okay am i getting the same answer or not don't be foolish so that's it for this now we will be moving on to the next and yeah whatever the test you're understanding i missed out i didn't do it does not mean it's not important i think it you are able to do it on your own so make sure that you do it on your own like test understanding three i didn't do that is, I think, changes in working capital you have to find out, but I've already shown you. So I'm expecting that you will do it on your own. Okay. So now let us go through the standard pro forma for the conventional approach. Okay. This is how it needs to look like for international uh, investment appraisal question. Same like uh, your domestic this thing okay local net present value like without the exchange rates and all you'll be having sales receipts and payment from there deduct variable costs wages incremental fixed costs and tax royalties is something which comes for international uh, investment projects so that you need to deduct then tax allowable depreciation will come how it normally comes that needs to be deducted and you will be getting taxable profit once you get taxable profit you need to deduct your tax the foreign tax and then you add back your tax allowable depreciation then your investment your working capital you deduct and then you get the net foreign cash flow okay once you get it net see the next page is the continuation after the net foreign cash flow okay because we don't have space to put everything in one so we have to put it in the next slide after that you will be having the exchange rate using the exchange rate okay the ones which you have predicted based on ppt that is purchasing power parity theory okay you'll be converting it into your home currency home currency cash flow after that once you convert it then you will be having the local tax that you have to pay and how do you decide on the local tax depends how much you have paid in the foreign see we always pay the highest tax higher of the two in total so let's say in the foreign uh, foreign um, country's tax rate is 20% and your home currency tax rate is 30%. So foreign currency, you already pay 20%, the balance 10%, so that it becomes 30%. The balance 10% you are paying locally, that, that you deduct. Then any royalty that was not taxed, you add, it's an inflow for you. For the foreign country, it's an outflow because they have to give you the royalty. When it comes to your home country, it becomes an inflow. Then on that, you have to deduct tax 30%. Okay, remember royalties, management charges, all these things. When you charge tax, it is not the difference 10%. It is full 30%. Remember that. 10% tax, we do always say double tax treaty, right? The balance tax that you pay in the home country, it is only for the profit only for the profit of the foreign currency's operation. Only on that you pay the balance. Taxable profit. Foreign countries taxable profit you pay the balance. Not on the royalties and all. There you pay the full domestic tax 30% only. Then you get your net home currency cash flow. Then discount using your home currency discount factor. Let's say 16%. Get the currency present value and then net present value. Positive or negative. It's a little bit too much. But you need to practice lots of questions on it. One question is not enough. Two questions is not enough. I would say five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Now, how do you perform the calculation so that things become easier for you because it's a lengthy thing? Let's make it easier for you. How do you perform the calculation? This is from the exam's point of view. Okay. 
it will be necessary to do a summary of subsidiary workings in order to reach the final net present value figure so remember the basic rule see you have to do lots of working to get that net present value in that table also there are many things which requires working when you are doing working label your working correctly make sure the workings are not in the main table they are separate from the main table where you are going to present your net present value all in flows out flows okay you need to lay out the table very clearly you need to remember you will need one column more than the length of the project if tax is lagged by a year for example project is for four year and let's say tax is paid one year after so you need one more year five years so one more column needs to be added then you need to make sure all your workings just don't do any workings and uh, uh, assume the examiner will know that this is the working this is how i got my back just because i know 16 person here they know from where i got no you have to reference your working very correctly and this is where most of the students lose their marks because they don't reference their workings correctly they put workings everywhere no more order no consistency wherever they want they put they don't know how to use excel in excel shit they use they write the workings wherever they want in the main table also they include working sometimes sometimes you don't understand whether it's a working or the actual uh, main table the answer so don't do that another thing which many of you do not pay so much of attention because you people are so much into numbers 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 calculation 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 is you need to write if it's a 50 marks question in section a remember you are asked to write a report and when you ask to write a report it's just not calculation calculation always supports for you to write a report you need to write you need to state your assumptions for example let's say you used vac 16 person you need to say why you use that vac 16 person if you did any changes why did you think For example, you assume sales are accurate. Let's assume that sales that you are focused at are accurate based on this. You need to state assumptions. And then you be prepared to comment on them further in any written report that follows. If they ask you to, you need to comment. On your numbers, you should be able to comment on your numbers. In a report. Okay. Then, the following is a guideline order of approach for the conventional approach. Just now we saw that. And this is the guideline for it. These are the six steps. If you follow them correctly, you are going to score the maximum for this question. That is, you need to calculate all the relevant follows in the foreign currency first. Do not convert to home currency. Do not be in a hurry. Whatever the currency is there, foreign currency, calculate the relevant flows. Maybe most of them, they will be given only as foreign currency only. You don't have to do anything. You just need to list it in the table. Then, tax. Deduct the tax. Take the foreign country's uh, tax and deduct it. Then convert the net flows into the domestic. After that, you convert it to the domestic currency using the exchange rate that you have predicted. They will not give you the exchange rate. They will only give you one exchange rate, year, four, year zero. After that, year one, two, three, four, depending on the length of the project, you have to predict exchange rate. Now, that exchange rate can be predicted using various methods. You might be given two interest rate, use interest rate parity. You might be given the inflation rate of two country, use the purchasing power parity. So it depends. Either you'll be given the interest rate, either you'll be given the inflation. Out of this two, you'll be given one. For you to predict exchange rate, do not worry. You can, you will be able to predict exchange rate. They will not make a question so difficult where you will not be able to predict the exchange rate. Fourth, after that, after you convert, any restrictions are, if any restrictions are there on remittances, remember this will have an impact on the additional tax that is payable by the parent. okay add any domestic cash flow you might be having your home country's cash flow which has nothing to do with foreign project add it add it to what to all the amounts that was remitted to you from the overseas and finally the sixth step discount you need to discount that total cash flow in your domestic currency only at the cost of capital either the company's cost of capital is given to you either you have to calculate it calculate that too also and then find the net present value either of it but mostly they will give you the cost of capital they will not make it so difficult now we'll be doing the final two questions that is test understanding five and test understanding six will be done in excel the major questions it has everything in it all what we have covered in this lecture is there in that question 
before we move on to the last part of this lecture that is how do you finance the international projects that is the last part of this which has more of discussion actually to write things theory parts so let's do test understanding five test understanding five test understanding five is the introductory question and test understanding also will be a little similar to this but it will be a complete question which we'll be doing in excel okay so let's start foreign net present value parrot is a uk based company three year project and initial investment is 81 million in ffi residual value is 10 million and net pre-tax net cash inflow has been given for three years uk parent company will charge overseas project with two million pounds of management charges each year look at the currencies okay it's very important that you uh, check the currencies in which it is this all are in ffi and this is in uk pounds current spot rate has been given uk inflation is four percent and farland inflation is seven percent farland tax is 20 percent and paid immediately any losses are carried forward and netted off against the first available profit tax allowable depreciation is on straight line basis and any residual value will be taxable at 20% uk tax is 30% payable in one year earlier okay they recently undertook a similar risk project in uk and use 11% as a discount rate calculate the net present value of the project in pounds okay so where do you start this is fully calculation you can start with anything okay you can either start mainly start working and then uh, at, like as you go along you can wherever you required working you can do or else the second method is you finish with all your workings and then start with the main table anything is fine so we can maybe start working with our exchange rates always keep your exchange rates ready since we know this is an international project so you need your exchange rates so let's keep your working one as exchange rate let's do that i'll be doing it on, okay so when you do a question like this a full-fledged question you need to label your workings okay workings and there will be multiple workings there working one you need to label the number and mention what is this for this is exchange rates this is what i call referencing okay you are using what p p p you are using purchasing power parity because inflation of the two countries has been given so now you just need one spot and the two inflation rate so what is the spot if you see the spot is 5 ffi 1 so it's 5 5 into inflation of what country ffi's inflation will come as a counter currency that is 7 percent and uk is the base currency which will come in the denominator so 1.07 divided by 1.04 this is for year one equal to 5.14 for year two you'll be using that 5.14 into again 1.07 to the power divided by 1.04 which will be 5.29 and for year three make sure that when you are writing year one year two year three write it in different row, uh, rows like this 5.29 multiply by 1.07 divide by 1.04 which is equal to 5.45 so now you have the three exchange rates ready what else wherever you need to convert convert those things first okay see you first have to prepare everything in ffi foreign currency before you convert to your home currency so whatever is given in pounds already convert it back to ffi later you'll be converting it into pounds but anyway first you need to convert it into ffi so this 2 million that is given to you the management charges 
using the exchange rate now we can convert this into ffi okay so that is your working too this is why first finding exchange rate helps a lot you can work out on your other stuff for example now in your working too if you have to convert your management charges from pounds to ffi you need your exchange rate that's why make sure that your working one is i mean your working should be in such an order that you don't have to uh, wait now you don't have to wait because you have your working one to support your working two you understanding but if you have not calculated that exchange rate you cannot go ahead with your working two okay so working two is management charges you label it like this convert into ffi using exchange rate from working one so here year one how do you do that you multiply this time because the rates that you have got is ffi and the amount that is given is 2 million that is in pounds so different rates multiply okay so 2 million multiply by first year is 5.14 it will be 10.3 million ffi year 2 again 2 million multiply by what is the rate 5.29 which will be 10.6 million ffi and year 3 again 2 million because they told every year it will be 2 million 5.45 equal to 10.9 million ffi what what else what else can you think of tax exactly the furlance tax if you are not if you cannot think of all the workings at the moment no worry you can proceed ahead with the main table and then you stop to think okay wherever working is required you can come back and start the working what is the tax tax is in the same year okay tax 20 percent in fallen at 20 percent and it's in the same year okay but you have to see whether there is any loss or not because loss can be carried forward and netted off against the profit. For that, uh, you have to do the main table. Okay. Now you need to do the main table. So we'll start with the main table. We'll go down. Keep some space. Okay. And we'll start with F F I always write the currency in which you are dealing. Okay. If it's a foreign currency, you need to write the name of the currency. Millions. Even though it's a three year, remember one year we are paying later for UK tax. So you have to add one more year starting with zero. T1, T2, T3 and T4. So start with your net inflow that has been given to you for three years right 35 80 and 50 where did i get this number from i got this figure from here this this and this okay and from here you have to deduct your management charges remember from foreign currency you always have to deduct management charges because they are the one who have to give the charges to you to the uk company working to you always have to refer this is how you reference which working number do you use for management charges that is enough you have already got it this is why you need it in ffi the management charges so that you can put this in this table 10.3 deduction 27 oh sorry 10.6 and 10.9 then we have tax allowable depreciation tad which needs to be deducted how much tax 
tax allowable depreciation you have to check it is on a straight line basis you have to check the cost initial investment if you see it is 81 so just do 81 divided by 3 you will get it which is 27 that means all the three years it is 27 because this is straight line basis you do not need a separate working if it was a reducing balance yes a separate working was required so you deduct 27 27 and 27 now you get the amount this year it's a loss this year it's a profit and this year is a profit now tax at 20 percent this is working three year require because there's a loss that's why separate working is required see this year you cannot do anything you need to shift it to the next year because they told if there's a loss it will be carried forward and set off against the first taxable profit okay so here let's wait and let's write the next line i'll come to that later again tax allowable depreciation you need to add back again don't forget to add back 27 27 27 and now any capital expenditure or investment that is 81 in year zero so 81 then you have a residual value all this does not require working residual value is 10 which has to be written when in year three always the last year then we have tax on that residual value Tax on residual value will be 20% on that 10, which is 2. Okay. So you need to work out on that tax for year 2 and 3. First. So let's go to the working and finish off with our tax. Okay. So our profit was what? 42.4 was the profit in the second year. So from there you bring forward the loss and take the loss. You minus the loss 2.3 million. And on this you take 20%. That will be your tax. How much? Which will be 8.02. It will be 8.02 but you can take as 8 million if you want to round up. Okay, so that's how we get 8 million as tax. There is no tax in year 0, sorry, year 1 and 8. And here in year 3, 3 normally you can take 12.1 into 20%, which is 2.42. So you can take 2.4 and deduct it. Okay, now what you will be getting is net cash flow but in FFI currency. So here it is 81, 24.7, 61.4 and 44.7. Nothing in year 4 because it is for the UK tax which will be paid in year 4. Now using those exchange rate which you have calculated in working 1, just put it here. Year 0 it's already given us 5. Okay, others 5.1, 5.29. 5.45 now the net cash flow in uk pounds after you use the exchange rate you divide it because this is in ffi exchange rate is in ffi same currency divide and get it in pounds 16.2 4.8 11.6 okay remember now all the uk currency uk stuff so in uk you are paying extra tax so extra uk tax for that you need to do working for there's a separate working for it we'll come to that later management charge you can keep a line and whatever the area where workings are not required just write finish it up management charges we have what are the management charges already is given as two million pounds so just take two million two 2 and 2. 
okay then tax on that charge remember to take tax don't never forget tax on the management charge tax on management charge what is it what tax rate exactly the entire tax rate that is there in uk what is the tax rate in uk in ffi it is 20 percent but you have to take the uk tax now uk tax rate is 30 percent so you have to take 30 percent fully entirely okay double tax treaty does not come in management charges it is only for the tax profit taxable profit of the country that is when remitted you have to take the only the difference so 30 percent 30 percent of 2 0.6 which will be paid after one year so here 0.6 0.6 and 0.6 you see it went into the fourth year also now discount factor you can use 11 percent the uk's discount factor because you have brought everything to pounds so 1 0 0.901 0 0.81 0 0.731 0 0.659 and the present value present here it is 16.2 that is outflow okay sorry here yeah 16.2 or late sorry Okay. Then here, so we'll see. Extra UK tax. Okay, let's go to working for. For which we have kept the space. Working for. UK tax. Now. What is the taxable profit you need to understand okay from working three taxable profit in year two is how much from 42.4 you have deducted the loss that means it is 40.1 million ffi this currency but you have to convert this into pounds first okay we already have the exchange rate using the exchange rate that is divide it okay remember this is for year two so use the year two's exchange rate that is 5.29 which will be equal to 7.6 million pounds so out on this you will only pay 10 percent remember tax in uk is 30 percent and fallen is 20 percent 20 percent you are paying in fallen so in uk for the taxable profit only the difference you have to pay that is 10 percent that means 10 percent on the 7.6 7.6 into 10 percent which is equals to 0 0.7 it will be 0 0.76 but we'll take up 0 0.8 okay we'll round up round up to one decimal please and it will be taken in year three this one because one year later in uk what about taxable profit in year three taxable profit in year 3 was 12.1 with this you have to add the residual value also in that year which becomes 22.1 we'll go to the cash flow and i will show you you see 12.1 with this 12.1 you are adding this 10 also okay So 22.1. Now using your three's exchange rate, that is 5.45, convert this into pounds. It will be 4.1 million pounds. On that 4.1 million pounds, you are paying 10% only, the difference, which will be equal to 0 0.041, but we'll take it as one decimal place, which will be paid in year four, one year later. Okay. 
So this 0 0.8 and 0 0.4 will only go as tax in year 3 and 4. Where is the uh, extra tax? Yes, here. So year 3, 0 0.8, 0 0.4, which will go in the fourth year. So after taking everything into account, this will be 6.8, the cash flow, 13, 8.8, 1 negative 1 okay when you are taking the present value this will be 16.2 6.1 10.6 make sure you are getting the figure 6.4 and 0 0.7 in negative and when you are taking the net present value just the sum of all the present value it will be in pounds 6.2 million so accept the project you have to write it so accept the project So that's it for test understanding six. Now we are going to go through test understanding six. That was for test understanding five. And this question will be doing it in Excel. Okay. But make sure when I do it in Excel, you have the question in front of you. We'll be doing it. And I will show you how to, through the formula, net present value formula is there in Excel. Through that formula, how can you get it? So there are lots of writing here I can see. Okay. Lots of theory part, but anyway, we'll read it. Pussy TPS is a specialized manufacturer of window frames. It's main UK. Manufacturing operation is based in south of, uh, south of England from where it distributes its products throughout the UK. The directors are now considering whether they should open up an additional manufacturing operation in France, which they believe there will be a good market for their products. All those things you can quickly read because you are more focused on the calculation part. A suitable factor is, see, when you have to discuss, when they ask a discussion question, all these things matters a lot, okay? You have to read all this very like carefully but when it's calculation you can just skip through all those things you just need what is your currency what is the foreign currency that you did all this information the numbers basically you need a suitable factory has been looked at outside paris that could be rented on a five-year lease annual charge 3.8 million euro payable each year in advance cost is 75 million 60 will be paid at the start of the project balance 12 months later that means after one year 15 million will be paid At the start of each year, the factory would require working capital equal to 40% of the year sales revenue. Factory will produce and sell 80,000 80, windows per year. Okay, rest all although it's first year because of the need to run in the machine and its new workforce output is only expected to be 50,000. Each window is likely to be sold for 750. Price is 150% of markup. French factory would be set up on a wholly owned subsidy of this one in France, 25% straight line depreciation. Allowable expense, corporation tax instance is 40%. Without delay, you have to pay, and any unused losses can be carried forward and set up against full profit. No UK tax would be payable on the after tax French profit. All amount are in euros, are given in current terms, that means you have to inflate. Annual inflation in France is uh, 6%, and it will remain as 6%. All euro cash flows are expected to increase in line with the inflation rate, with the ex exception of the, everything will increase with inflation. Okay, but exception of the rental, factory rental will not increase. And the cost of manufacturing equipment, both of this will remain unchanged. Whenever they say something remain unchanged, do not inflate those things. Keep it. French factory would be producing windows to a special design patented. To protect its patent right, they will charge its French subsidy a fixed royalty of this much, 20 per window. This cost is again available against the tax liability. That means you need tax on it. Current spot rate has been given 1.5. Inflation in UK is 4%. There is no remittance restrictions. Okay. Whatever France is earning entirely, they can remit back to the bearer. That is UK. This is an all equity finance company quoted on London Stock Exchange. Its shares has a beta value of 1.25. Why are they giving all this equity finance beta value? Now tell me. Because they have not given you directly the VAC or the cost of capital. You have to find the cost of capital also using this. So it's uh, a little bit too much. Treasury bill is 10%. Expected return is 18%. UK tax is 35%. One year in a year. That means UK tax one year later you'll pay. What is the plan? It's five year. 
at the end of the five year working capital will be recovered see all these are your assumptions okay most of your assumptions you will get in the last para that you have to write for the report and the production equipment would have a scrap value at that time 70 million before tax process on asset sales are taxed at 40 percent assume all cash flows arise at the end of the year to which they relate unless otherwise stated so now evaluate the proposed investment in france and recommend so once you evaluate evaluate means you have to calculate and tell whether it's good or bad then you need to recommend what investment decision should be made by pusk tplc you should clearly state assumptions and work all your calculations around to the nearest 10000 either in dollar sorry either in pounds or euro or 0.01 million in euro or 0.01 million pounds you have to round it up whenever they say round up you have to round up you cannot keep your answer as it is otherwise you are not going to get that mark if you do not round up even if your answer is technically correct you will lose one mark for not rounding up note that in a cbe that is your computer based examination you can use net present value function also to save time i will show you both the manual method in spreadsheet and also with the formula so let us go to excel open your uh, acca website login and open your cv practice platform choose the subject that is afm the blank workspace we have already done in lecture 5 the excel for this also we'll do excel now so i'm sure you know how to open your in a cv practice platform okay so let's open and let's do it there and make sure that you have the question with you So now we are on the Excel, we are on the CV platform and here from the response options, open the spreadsheet and now let's start with test understanding 6. So your starting point is you first have to decide how many columns you need. Okay, you need to label first. So this is a cash flow. Double click on the cell, otherwise you will not be able to type. Cash flow analysis in euro million. Because you are supposed to make it in euro. The heading could be anything, but it should mean what it is for. I mean, it should be a meaningful heading. It is, I'm going to expand this. Okay. Cash flow analysis always write the currency euro. So you don't have an euro there. What do you do? Go to symbol, select euro, insert. Okay. Bracket. Bracket, remove this bracket. Euro, million. Okay. Make sure the headings and all are bold because remember even though it's calculation it should look very presentable okay and now that you have your professional skill marks 20 marks examiner will look for this thing how you are presented professional marks are for your presentation also so it is for five years cash flow but you also have to add one year extra because for uk you are paying tax one year later so you start with zero one two three four five and six okay you can even center line if you want so that it looks a little better bold it and click here the center light now you need to write your descriptions here in this columns so you need to write your description so one column for description revenue or you can write sales remember sales have working because you have inflation as well as different selling price with the volume so it is not easily you cannot put sales okay so we'll keep it as working one we'll keep working for sales and leave and go to the next then we have our cost all cost needs to be deducted from sales operating cost see whether anything requires a working or not this also requires a working we'll label it as two okay then we'll go and then what are the other cost rental charges are there okay rental charges does not have any working that you can put directly it is the same only okay 
what is the rental charges how much you have the question in front of you make sure that you go through it the rental charges are 3.8 that is on a five year lease and remember they are payable each year in advance so that means for year one it will be paid in year zero year two it will be paid in year one one year before only it will be paid so that's why rental charges will start from year zero okay and it will be 3.8 do not put bracket put minus because i told you that in this excel the one on your cb platform you need to put minus that's how it is formatted if you put it at if you put it as minus it will take it as a number if you put bracket it will take it as a text it will not count it as a number that's the reason so minus 3.0 you can what you can do is just click this cell and make sure this plus sign comes and then take it to the other cell it will copy the exact the same thing okay So this and this here does not have anything. So if it does not have anything, just leave it blank. Then we have royalties. Royalties also has a separate working for it. Okay. Then tax. Tax also has a working. Okay. Let's keep it W4. So whatever wherever the workings are required, we'll keep space and then we'll go. And then the initial investment. Okay. What is the initial investment? How much is the initial investment? Go to your test understanding and six, uh, see what is the initial investment. Initial investment. It is 60 million, they told. Okay, total is 75, but out of the 75, 60 million at the start of the project and the balance 15 million will be paid 12 months later. That means after one year. It could be paid like this. It's not necessary. All the initial investment will be used in the first year only. Right? Like in this question. So it is 60 minus 60. And minus 15 a year later then we have scrap value not all the time we have scrap value but in this question it is said that we have scrap value so what is the scrap value what is the scrap value You need to find out from the text that is given that's the reason i told you always underline the numbers okay so this it is in the last para that is given that it is 70 million before tax the scrap value okay so it will always be in the last year that is the fifth year do not take sixth year as the last year the sixth year is added because of the tax that is paid one year late that's it okay so it is in 70 then we have tax on the scrap also it is tax allowable so what is the tax what is the percentage of tax which tax do you pay the UK tax is 35 percent okay but we don't pay UK tax We pay the France tax, tax in France, what is it? 40%. 40% is the tax, okay? So when you need tax, just put equal sign, 40% into, sorry, into this number, scrap value. Enter. Okay, it's minus, okay? Since this is minus, how do you make this minus? Just click on the cell, go before the bracket, Sorry, go, uh, I mean, after equal, just put a minus sign and enter. 
because you need to show it as a negative because you're deducting it it's a tax okay you don't have to worry that working is not showed it's just minus 28 no the moment the examiner clicks on the cell they will know the working has been done here so you don't have to worry about it but why are we taking separate workings for sales operating cost royalties and all those things because it requires a major working there are so many steps that needs to be done for each year that you cannot do it in one go like this that's why you needed to show it as a separate working i think now you understand the logic behind this right then we have working capital These are very common things which are always there in any net present value equation working capital investment sales cost but royalties and all are for international investment okay for this also there's a working working five working capital usually has a working okay and then what is it what do you get is cash flow cash flow in euro million so insert the symbol euro insert million bit net cash flow euro insert million you need to write in which currency you are getting the net cash flow currency is very important and after conversion also you have to write this is in euro okay we don't know we'll keep a space for it we don't know okay then here we'll be using the exchange rate that is insert the euro divide by insert go to oh, sorry go to pounds insert yeah for this we need a separate working so working six you can say sometimes we have to change the number of the workings okay we'll see later this is just roughly we are right making a their main table and doing it this will save a lot of time if you go like this and then we have after the exchange rate is the cash flow in pounds so insert pounds double click okay million cf cf means cash flow okay you can write cash flow so that you do not get confused now it is the cash flows are in pounds remember once it is in pounds what about the royalties always forget to take royalties management charges and all those things so you have to take the insert pound just take it this is royalties okay it is in millions now this also requires a working separate working now you can take it as three because if you see here Royalties was working three. So at this time only you work for this also by converting it. And then there'll be a tax. There'll be a tax on that. If you do many questions, you will know the steps already. You don't need to wait. UK royalty tax. Okay. Now you have to pay UK tax. When you pay UK tax, you have to pay the entire UK tax. UK tax on royalties and after that what do you get is you get the net insert pounds double click otherwise it will go net pound cash flow now everything is taken into account all the uk tax uk cash flows are taken and now just discount okay you cannot use the discount factor you don't know what discount factor so just write df at we don't know just leave it like this because that also we have to work out 
okay working seven keep some space and write like this working seven we need to find out this time what is the discount discount factor and after that here we are going to get the present value and then finally net present value this is what we are looking for okay so make this table like this okay now you can go down either you can start doing the workings down or you can start work, doing the workings on this side of the table anything but make sure all the workings are together one after the other it, sh it should not be that one working is on left side the other one is on the right side the other one is you know you have to struggle finding out the workings okay don't do that it has to be very very presentable especially now that professional skills are added you have to be more careful about it how your workings are displayed how the main table never put your workings in this main table the purpose of this main table is only for the numbers that will go that's it workings are needs to be separate from it so now i will write workings it needs to be bold start with working one start in the order working one two three like that so here we need the sales working one is for the sales okay so now how do you start make sure that whenever you're putting the number it is in one column okay either in this or this whatever it is So in this case, okay, we'll put the year, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. We'll put the sales here. Sales in the next, uh, the amount in the next column. Okay. So how do you do? see whenever you have to put you don't have to show the numbers and then on the other side you do the calculation again no in one column only in one calculation only let it go because whatever you do in this cell it will be seen here the moment examiner comes and clicks they can see the formula here that means you have already done the formula you don't have to show on this cell if, for example 50 uh, into 7 into let's say divide by 8 for example you want something like this again you are doing it here 50 into 8 and then you are showing the answer no need to do this two times and waste time okay so just put equal sign okay what is the volume what is the volume you should know what is the sales volume Sales volume is given fifty thousand. Okay. In the first year, fifty thousand. After that, it is eighty thousand, and then price is seven fifty. But remember the inflation; it will increase. What is the inflation? Six percent. So you have to increase the sales. Inflation is six percent. Sales price is 750. Volume is 50,000. First year. Rest all is 80,000. So 50,000 into 750 into 1.06 because first year this. Just So when you are writing this, okay, don't write full numbers like this because see the table, you are dropping down the millions. You are writing 4.860 like that. For example, this 3.8 million. That's how you are writing, right? You are dropping down the zeros, the six zeros. So how do you do this here? Remember, just put a bracket. divide the whole answer by 1 million because you don't want to cut down the six zeros one two three 
one two three six zeros are there enter okay this is what i call smart technique no one will teach you no textbook will ever tell you how to convert it into median you might you might be manually thinking doing it okay no one will tell you divide it by one million because when you put it in the table you cannot put three nine seven uh, three nine seven five zero 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 look at the other figure you need to put 39.75 only next year when you do you cannot take it to the other cell because volume changed from 50 to 80 so this also you have to do it on your own 80 thousand into okay don't forget to put bracket into 750 again into 1.06 but this time it will be to the power 2 how do you show to the power 2 press shift and number 6 you should get this sign and then press 2 that means it's power to the power 2 close the bracket divide the whole thing again by 1 million six zeros will be there after one enter you see now i'll try to take it to the other cell and see what's happening will it work or not but from the second cell because first cell has total uh, vo different volume it will not work this plus sign should come and take it to that cell it will take the cell same so undo undo okay when you go to the third listen to this how do you save your time you have to be a little out of the box you have to think you have to be a little what do i say smart if you keep on entering like this every time because if you see there's a pattern whenever there's a pattern try to save time the pattern is uh, all from year one to four uh, sorry year two to five volume is eighty thousand price is 750 so both are same inflation is also six percent so so if everything is same why not just inflate the previous figure by the six percent and put it in year three year three inflate by six percent and put it in year four year four inflate by six percent and put it in year five you understanding what i mean so just put equal enter this and just take 1.06 that's it because every year inflation is same you th remember this you cannot do inflation keeps changing every year volume keeps changing every year the price change uh, keeps changing every year this is only possible when volume price every inflation everything is same but with year one you cannot do that so keep year one from year two onwards you can do because there's a pattern from year two to five present now you can drag it to the other cell and see what's happening okay it will just take the six percent of the previous year inflate it because volume is same price is same you see how i saved my time rather than every time entering eight eighty thousand into seven fifteen to one point zero six to the power one two three four like that now do not keep your answer like this this is in uh, i don't know how many decimal place this is in let's say five decimal places this is three decimal don't keep it like this it has to be consistent keep everything in two decimal places so what are you going to do take this click here this okay 0, 0.00 automatically it will take into two decimal places so now what are you going to do just copy paste these things into your main table copy starting from one to five you cannot paste because you have a formula attached to it i told you in lecture five whenever you have a formula with something go to paste special click the formula or you can even put the values also but better to put formula okay it will come like this okay you have to put one by one So this copy paste special with the formula okay so the moment examiner clicks here they can see formula has been done 
or they can even go to working one also separately if you just want to click the copy paste the value it will just paste 39.75 so the moment you click here you will not be able to see the formula there but this is uh, the reason why you are able to see the formula here is because you have copy pasted with the formula if you select the value it will just take the number formula will not come so someone needs to go to working one and see what is the formula that is also okay but uh, make sure that you know how to do it with the value also and see the difference do it yourself and check okay copy paste special this will take it 4.16 you have to again make it to two decimal places remove it but anyway i will try a shorter cut to this rather than pasting one by one individual i will see whether we can copy paste everything entirely or not because this is this will take a lot of time there is always always try to find the best way possible to save time just because you are knowing one thing does not mean other things might not work okay so go to the other cell go here and this okay now sales is done similar way you have to do for operating cost also go down put working to operating cost fold it because i've done for working one like that so working two needs to be same so the, all this needs to be copy paste paste okay you can copy paste it like this now equal to okay what is the cost remember you need your working one here okay for production costs what is what is given there you need to go back to your para and read what is it they told each window is likely to be sold for 750 a price that represents a 150 percent markup on cash production cost 150 percent markup okay already markup is there with that markup okay so when you are taking the production cost you have to divide the sales by 2.5 why 2.5 with 100 at 150 percent markup it becomes 2.5 250 percent 250 means 2.5 so here when you do it put the cell divide by 2.5 because it's 250 percent 150 percent markup is added with 100 means what 250 percent 250 percent means 2.5 so all your production costs you need to divide by 2.5 enter okay second year also you need to do like that Take this year's sales from your working one divided by 2.5. Enter. Now you don't have to do anything. Now you can just drag it to the other cell because in the first two, you have divided by 2.5. So now they know that you have to divide by 2.5 only. Ah, no, you cannot do because you are using the figure from here. You cannot copy paste this. Just see. Try to copy paste, it will not work. Ah, it worked actually it worked it's taking from this cell automatically just click in year 3 and see b27 so automatically it's taking this cell and is dividing by 2.5 it's work it's working okay so here click take all the cell go here and two decimal places you see 
this saves a lot only in working one it will take a little bit of time after once is once it is set up a install is very easy to follow by so now we are going to take this copy the reason is when you are taking copy paste is not working is because that is in downside and this is across horizontal that is vertical this is horizontal i think that's the reason is not taking it but we'll try paste special with the formula okay see it will not work but anyway we will try let's see if it two things is working or not first we'll try you can practice as much as possible okay do not be in a hurry to finish it will not work try to just space the value no it will not work or you can just type the values also 15.9 make sure that this is minus because you have to deduct since you have working tutor support you can just write the number 26.97 minus 26.97 i think typing will save more time minus 28.58 Minus thirty point three zero. Sorry, minus thirty point three zero. Minus thirty two point one two. Wait, something is. Why this number is not seen? Okay, so if it's not working, just try to copy paste this number. Copy, paste the paste special, and just paste the value. Okay. The number could be seen here, but I don't know why it is not visible here. Okay, maybe because the number is big enough. try to just bring it to two decimal places no it's not working i know what's the reason it's very weird isn't it let's try to fix this issue Minus thirty-two point one two. Okay, just go there. Format cell. Number minus. Okay. Just take a sum function and see whether you can work it or not. Even that is not working. What's wrong with this cell? Just click undo. Okay, we'll try to put this figure again. It's 
very weird. I'm deleting it, it's not working. Okay, we'll try to do it again. So now the issue is solved. Okay, as you can see, we have taken the operating cost. Rental charge is already there. Now we are going to do working three, that is royalties. So let's go down. Okay. Working three. This is also, you need to insert the symbol. Since it is in this currency. Royalties. So royalties also for all the five years. So I'm going to just take all these and copy paste. Now for the royalty payments, what do you do? What do you do for the royalty payments? First of all, you need to understand if you go to the paragraph about the royalty payment, that is in which paragraph that talks about royalty payments. Third. Third and the seventh paragraph. Okay, the seventh paragraph talks about royalty. Okay, they told that they will charge a fixed royalty that is 20 pounds per window. Per window. That means with the production, the production which you have used for sales and the cost. First year 50,000 and the remaining four years it is 80,000. So you have to multiply that 20 pounds with the number of the windows that you have produced. So that means the price that you get, the royalty will be in pounds. You have to convert it into euro because the cash flow that we are making is first in euro. Later, we'll convert it into pounds. You're understanding. So for that, we also need the exchange rate, right? But we didn't calculate exchange rate. So now you know that because you have to convert pounds to euro, you need exchange rate. So your next working will be exchange rate. That is working number four. So when I go to the main table, Okay, if you remember that we have labeled working for as uh, the tax, but now we'll go and change that figure. Okay, you can always do these changes. Where is the, okay, this one, the exchange rate here. This will become as working. Mm, okay, we'll not put any number for this right now. Oh, yeah, working for sorry. This is working for now. Because royalty is working three. Okay. So this will become your working five tax. And then working capital will become six. And this is seven, which is correct. Okay. Rest all is fine. So we'll keep the space and we'll write working for. Okay. Working for is exchange rate. I'm going to make it bold. Now you know that the inflation is given of the two country so using it you can use the this thing okay we are going to copy this copy paste copy paste paste okay once this is done how are you going to do this so you have been given the rate as 1.5 the exchange rate the spot rate so you have to take the spot rate 1.5 okay then you need to multiply with the inflation rate of the country which country the counter currency what is the counter currency in this case is it the euro or the pounds it is the euro so six percent that is 1.06 that is the foreign currency divide by 
four percent that is the UK's inflation and enter okay make sure that you round this to two decimal places 1.53 so now when you take for the second year it will be equal to on the year one spot rate you are going to take 1.06 divided by 1.04 so every time it will be multiplied by 1.06 divided by 1.04 by the previous year once you do this you don't have to do it every time just drag it to the other cell automatically it will take it you see so now you have the exchange rate ready with you using this exchange rate you will be doing working three or what you can do is even this you can keep as working three exchange rate first you can calculate exchange rate and then you can do the royalty payment that is also fine there's no marks will be cut or anything by changing the working order no so what is the royalty payment see for royalty payment equal to first year windows is 50,000 that is a unit multiply this by 20 pounds so 20 you don't have to write pounds and all when you're doing calculation it's just 20 only okay enter this is equal to 1 million right but you have to multiply this or divide by the exchange rate how do you convert it into euro this is in pounds and this exchange rate is in euro so this is in pounds this is in euro different exchange rates currency is different multiply i told you okay so when you multiply you multiply click this and enter and make sure that this is into two decimal places but there is one thing what needs to be done we didn't divide it by 1 million because i told you we are dropping down the million so divide put a bracket it's always safe to put bracket bracket here and one two three one two three six zeros enter now you see so we are going to drag it to the other cell no it didn't work it didn't work in this because it's, they are just taking the exchange rate so no sorry you cannot take it for the second year because production is different so 80,000 multiply by 20 multiply by this second year exchange at least for the two year you have to do it before you copy paste to the other cell so round this to two decimal places oh you need to divide the, it by 1 million i always forget one two three one two three enter okay two point four nine now let's see we'll try to drag it to the other cell yes it will work out so now this royalty payment you have to go and put it in the table you can just type it also we'll just type the number rather than copy pasting and all those things it will take a lot of time so what are we going to do from year one it's in minus because you have to deduct so 1.53 2.49 minus 2.54 minus 2.59 minus 2.64 now what is left tax so the next working is for tax which will be working five okay okay so for tax okay this is uh, again you have to put the years five years 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव ओके सॉरी फाइव यू कैन इवन मेक इट बोल्ड सेंटर लाइन रेवेन्यू ऑलरेडी आप गॉट द रेवेन्यू सो जस्ट टाइप इट थर्टी नाइन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव सिक्सटी सेवन पॉइंट फोर दिस दिस आर ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड सेवेंटी फाइव पॉइंट सेवेन फाइव एंड एटी पॉइंट टू नाइन नेक्स्ट वी हैव डिडक्ट द ऑपरेटिंग कॉस्ट फ्रॉम इट ओके सो माइनस फिफ्टीन पॉइंट नाइन ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन सेवन माइनस ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट फाइव एट माइनस थर्टी पॉइंट थ्री जीरो माइनस थर्टी टू पॉइंट वन टू आफ्टर दैट डेप्रिसिएशन ओके टैक्स अलावल डिप्रिसिएशन यू हैव टू टेक रिमेंबर टैक्स अलावल डिप्रिसिएशन यू हैव टू डिडक्ट ओनली फॉर द टैक्स पर्पस and it's on a straight line basis that means for all the four years it will be same how much how much is the tax allowable depreciation it is on 25% straight line on the cost what is the cost understand what is the cost of the equipment it is 75 so on that 75 you have to take 25% which is 18.75 okay so 18.75 18.75 18.75 and 18.75 for the four years it will be 18.75 minus 18 okay We'll write it how we got it. Equal to twenty-five percent multiply by because first time, so you have to show the working on seventy-five because seventy-five is the cost of the equipment, and this has to be minus. So we'll put a minus figure here. Minus. We'll take this and copy paste it only for the four years, not for the fifth year. Why? Because twenty-five percent, twenty-five percent, twenty-five percent, twenty-five percent. If you take for the four years, it adds up to hundred percent. Okay. In short, if you add all this four, it will be equal to seventy-five only. So fifth year you cannot take the tax allowable depreciation. Then we have rental charges that needs to be deducted. It's like you are doing the cash flow again. No, wait for it. Minus. What are the rental charges? Three point eight for all the five years. Make it sorry. Something is wrong here. Okay, make this to two decimal places because everything is in two decimal places. After you deduct the rental charges, what else is remaining? Royalties. Royalties also we have calculated already. So take it minus one point five three minus. Uh, 2.49 minus 2.54 minus 2.59 minus 2.64. So now, what you get is known as taxable cash flow. Here. You can even underline this if you want to show. Underline. Now equal to take the sum function. Just take for one column. Take the sum function. Enter. Make the, sure that this is down to two decimal places. Now it's an already negative. Okay. Now copy paste it to the other cell. Done. Loss could be carried forward. So only first year you have loss. Okay. So now loss. Brought forward, how much? 
minus 0.23 in the next year because next year you are having a profit tax is 40 percent in uk sorry uh, tax is 40 percent in not in uk the euro and no lag you paid in the same year so tax you can even write the tax rate next to it if you want tax at 40 it's better to show the tax at 40 percent okay no lag so here you are not going to pay any tax okay it will be zero here it will be equal to 0 0.4 multiply by you have to take the sum function of this okay first take sum function this and this on that you take 40 percent which is 6.072 but you can round this up to two decimal places and you can take it to the other cell okay so now what else you can copy this same tax in the main table go here and take the tax just wait a minute okay so here you take the tax zero 6.07 oh it has to be minus minus 6.07 because it's a deduction ah sorry in year zero nothing goes see wrong column zero be very careful of which column are you putting which year are you putting this figure minus seven seven point one two minus 8.12 minus 16.69 so i think everything else is done now we need working capital you see having a main table like this you know but what are the things what are the workings you require what are the things you need to find out so now we have workings which is required and discount factor two workings the exchange rate we can already put because we have already calculated it so let's put the exchange rate that is 1.5 in year zero it is already given to you 1.53 1.56 1.59 even for year zero you need the exchange rate okay which is given to 1.62 and 1.65 You can use two decimal places for all this so now we need working capital for working capital let us go to working six you need to label it I'm going to make it bold okay remember it is on the increase okay before that since you have already calculated revenue it will not be issue but let me check the percentage of the working capital what is it what is the working capital it is 40% of the sales revenue of that year's sales revenue 40% okay so whatever the sales revenue is there we have already calculated it from working one just put it from there and take 40 40% uh, of it okay and for this we need it from year zero zero so year zero Because remember at the end 
working capital are always recovered whatever you have incurred so it will be incurred from year zero so in year zero you have to take year one's uh, sales revenue that is 30 okay equal to 39.75 multiply by 40 percent which is 15.9 and in that year you don't have any working capital only 15.9 so this only is your working capital okay next year when you go equal to okay what is the sales revenue for the this it is 67.42 on that you take 40 percent okay and remember you just have to take the incremental how much it increased so for year zero you already used 15.9 so minus this from this end for the second year you need this much okay round both to two decimal places third year is the same thing what is the sales revenue put bracket 71.46 take 40% of it and don't forget to minus it from the from the you have to add both this enter no it will value will come so how, how are you going to do put this like this close back don't put this rather put a plus sign add the addition of both you have to deduct enter so if you can see this are in two decimal places so this also you keep it in two decimal places don't keep one in two decimal places and the other one in three decimal places like that here also it's the same thing what is the sales 75.75 into 40 percent put bracket minus the addition of this three this or you can say minus the sum of this three enter this will round it up to two decimal places okay and then four equal to what is the sales revenue 80.29 take 40 percent close bracket minus sum of all this four enter take it to two decimal places 1.82 and at the end okay what do you have to get the recoverable amount how are you going to get it it is just the sum of all this enter I'm going to take this to two decimal places okay there is a way of checking whether this is correct or not how how what is your sales revenue in the year the last year go and check Thirty thirty okay. Sorry for the issue at the end, some issue happened, so it got closed. Now uh yeah, so there was a way of checking whether the working capital that you are required is correct or not is just take this revenue. 18.029 and take the 40 percent of the last year sales 40 percent of this 
because working capital is 40 percent and see it is 32.116 that means 32.12 and check what you have recovered is 32.12 it has to be equal all the always that means your working capital is correct this is just a way of showing you how to do this so now you have to go and put this figure in your working capital right so we'll do that So we have almost got all the cash flow. We just want the discount factor right now. Starting with year zero, it will be minus. Okay. So now let's do. It will be 15.9 minus 11.07 minus 1.61 minus 1.72 minus 1.82 and at the end it will be a plus you will be recovering 32.12 okay and we'll put this everything in two decimal places so that it looks everything is in two decimal places only now you can get the net cash flow very easily just use the sum function okay we are using the sum function start from here even though nothing is here why so that you can drag it to the other cell simply enter you can see it is minus 79.7 now easily you can drag it to the other cell this these are called smart techniques which will help you a lot okay so this is let's keep this in two decimal places now you have the exchange rate okay so now what else do you need just convert using the exchange rate but you need to know whether to multiply or divide the cash flows are in euro exchange rate is in euro you need to divide okay so here it will be equal to this divide by this enter and take this as two decimal places and copy paste it to the drag it to the other cell okay now what else do you need the royalties royalties you have already taken but you need it in pounds for working three you have calculated it in euro but remember before you have converted you have got it in pounds also just 80,000 multiplied by 20 that's it okay or if you want Go to working three okay i will show you you cannot take this royalties there this year this is after the euro you want in pounds now you have come to uk after exchanging so just click here and see this only this much you have to take fifty thousand into 20 will be 1 million but we have divided 1 million by 1 million in the table because we are dropping the six zeros and showing so it will be one It will be just one. Same way for the other years, it will be 80,000 into two, which is 16 million. 16 million divided by 1 million will be 1.6. So all the other four years, it will be 1.6. That's it. So be very careful that do not take the same thing. This is in euro. You want it in pounds before converting it into exchange rate using exchange rate. So it will be here starting from year one. Royalties are here. Sorry. This is inflow. For the UK, so one, one point six, and it will be one point six only. Okay, take this in two decimal places. Now what else? Tax on that UK. What is the tax? UK tax, thirty five percent. Thirty five percent. So pay thirty five percent on that. It will be paid. One year lag. Remember, this is UK tax. UK tax after one year. So here it will be 0 0.35 multiply by this. And don't forget to put a negative sign because it's a deduction minus enter. Now you can drag it to this cell. You did automatically take it. You have to take it till here. 
this cell. Year 6, because you are paying after one year, you get tax. Okay. And always have this uh, idea of checking. How do you check? Even if, especially when you're dragging it to the other cell, check the last cell. Check the first and check the last cell. You don't have to take the in between cell because if the first and the last are correct, means in between cells will be correct. Always check this. Whether the, do it manually and check whether it's correct or not. For example, just take 35% of 1.6 and see. It will be because all are 0 0.56, 0 0.5, it's same. So it is correct. Should be, right? Now, you have to get the net cash flow. When you get the net cash flow, again the sum function, okay? From here you have to take. So just take till here because other cells have cash flows even though year zero does not have. Take it to two decimal places, okay? And drag it. Simply drag it to the other cell till here. And convert everything into two decimal places. You see? This saves a lot of time rather than individually doing it in every cell. Some function, some function, some function. But there is something. Wait. Let me check with the answer. Eighteen point four six, nineteen point zero two six. This went wrong. This went wrong. Just click and check. The sum function, even though it is correct. Okay, sixty two point four plus one point six. Minus 0 0.56. I will do it. Okay, you can even use your calculator to check. Let's take out the calculator and check. 62.4 plus 1.6 minus 0 0.56 and 63.44. It is 63.44, but in the in the book it is showing as 63.06. So your in your book it's wrong. Then this is correct. Now we are reached till this stage. Everything is done. Check, double check again. Every column is filled. Every row is filled. We only need the discount factor as working seven to work out. So let's finish that also. This is a very lengthy question, I know, but what to do? Everything needs to be explained to you how to do. So this is cost of capital. You can say discount rate. You can say VAC. You can say anything. You can name it. It's fine. Everything is the same. Do not worry so much about the name. Okay. What do you have to use? The CAPM. Already it has given to you. Risk free is given to you. Market risk return is given to you. Beta is given to you. So equity beta has been given to you and they told all our equity finance. So nothing to worry about debt or anything. Your cost of equity is, is the VAC. So here, when you are working on, on the cost, discount rate, just put equal sign here. 10% plus. Oh, if you do not put percentage also, it's fine. Just put 10 because that's the risk free rate plus. The difference return is 18 minus risk free is 10 multiply it by the beta which is 1.25 and enter you are using cap CAPM by this so this is 20% so your back is 20% okay go to the main table and put here 20% we have left some space here at 20 using the table you can go here go to formula sheet go to your discount factor table and get 20 percent is here see 20 percent is the highest that you can use this table for so here you can get 0 0.833 0 0.694 0 0.579 0 0.482 0 0.402 you cannot copy paste it from there you need to type it okay 
It's not possible. Don't ask me why you cannot copy paste. Try it on your own and see. So now we are going to put the discount rate in the table. Okay, it will be one for year zero. 0 0.833, 0 0.694, 0 0.579, 0 0.482, 0 0.402, and 0 0.335. So now what? Now you just need to multiply this by the discount factor. That's it. and drag it to the other cells drag it to the other cell and see okay now net present value is what it's just the sum of all this enter and take it to two decimal places 1.41 you might get a different answer in your textbook, a little bit different. It's okay, it's fine because it's near that number due to some rounding or some number. But this is a positive, positive figure. Okay, that's not it. Even though the calculation part you have finished in this question, please understand few points. How did I do this question? I did it in a very systematic order. You need to do this in a systematic order, but first time you do, you will not understand you might leave some lines, some space, some things you might not put in the table. It's fine. But put the workings separate from the table. Make sure that you label the working. Make sure that you put the discount factor at least using the table. So there are easy things which you can do which can help you to gain marks. I understand there are some difficult parts like royalty payment would be a little difficult. And uh, those things will be a little difficult. So don't worry too much about the difficult things. My job is work on the easy things at least majority of it is easy like sales working out the cost working out the tax these things are easy you can work it out the residual value the tax on the scrap these things you can easily put on the table and get marks okay you you you, you can even write theories like if a discussion question is asked you can even write those and score marks so do not panic if you see a big question like this because it's the nature of AFM you have to expect the such kind of questions only in exam it will be even more with lots of things you might be having options also included in it real options now close it open your word processor you need to type they told state your assumptions that's what the requirement told right let us read the requirement again the requirement told Evaluate the proposed investment in France and recommend what investment decision should be made by the company. State clearly the assumptions and work it to the nearest 10,000 or 0 0.01 million or 0 0.01 million pounds. That's why we round everything to two decimal places. Anyway, all calculations are done. Okay, now you need to give a conclusion. So conclusion you come here and write. Okay, when you write the conclusion, remember to label which, what conclusion are you giving? For example, this is question one, because there are so many things, whether it is required question one, two, three, you might be using word process of all the three requirements. So how will the examiner know which one are you writing? That's why you need to label question one. Let's say it's part B, you have to write conclusion. Like this, you need to label like this and write. Maybe for question three also, you're using this word process. So you need to write like this. Okay, conclusion, make sure that you bold your subheadings out so that it makes your subheading stand out from your answer, this. Okay, now, what would be your conclusion, tell me? Your conclusion is that they are going to accept this project. Correct? They are going to accept this project, write the reasons why, because net present value is positive. But when you're writing it, you have to mention the name of the company because this is from the company's point of view, you are giving them recommendation. Don't say I think our project should be accepted because uh, what project? Name of the company, name the project. You can even write the value of the net present value also, 1.41 million, something like that. Okay, so you can write the conclusion like this. Conclusion should not be in bold, that you can normally write. Okay, so as the, see you can do all the changes in font and everything, it's up to you. 
but i would say keep it very simple in the exam you will not have so much of time to do it in different color different font do not waste so much of time selecting the good font whatever is there you can type it it's understood this is okay so as the french you are telling from the french company's point of view as the french manufacturing project i'm writing the conclusion for you but here after i'm not going to do it for you you have to write it on your own i'm just showing you because this is the first time i am doing a question on word ms word as a french manufacturing project generates a positive you can write net present value or the short form npv it is understood generates a positive net present value it should be undertaken use the words like it should be it have it should be yeah. because you are recommending no you are telling them what to do so it should be it should be under taken remember when you are telling this this is not enough there are some problems also with this so you have to end it like this always provided the directors i have this is a part of the report that you are writing directors are happy with the estimates they have made remember whenever you make this estimates are made always talk about estimates provided the directors are happy with happy with the estimates or assumptions also you can say anything later you are going to state those assumptions with the estimates they have made because this is based on estimates only so you have to talk about the drawbacks also rather than entirely saying or just forcing because positive net present value accept the project no tell them if they are okay with the limitations okay or estimates or assumptions anything anything now comes assumptions this you should never miss in afm trust me even if you are struggling with numbers at least state the assumptions there could be so many assumptions you might not think of all the assumptions but write the easy ones for you whatever is coming in your mind assumptions this is the last okay trust me after this you can go i'm not going to keep you any longer we just have to discuss the finance part how to finance the, this thing that is just discussion thing how to finance international projects so assumptions are what is it royalties are allowable against french tax in this case so in this case two more assumptions are there but i will write some general assumptions which you can write for any net present value calculations but for this question two two things extra i will write one is royalties we'll talk about royalties because this is an international project okay so royalties are allowable keep it very short sentence is very easy language short sentence is fine but finish the sentence don't write it in bullet points are against french or france tax royalties are allowable against france tax that means you can deduct tax from royalties in the france that is an assumption not always the case next royalties are subject to uk tax these are assumptions write it in next line okay so that you know one line for one para one assumption next this i'm writing it in bullet points okay uh, how to insert bullet point mm. okay anyway you cannot insert as and i don't know also how to do but anyway we'll just write it as i will put it as number any state cash flow whether it is domestic whether it is international these are general so it's good for you you can learn this and you can write it in your answer okay for example details details as how to the estimates of the project's cash flows were made you have made some estimates you know for the cash flow the estimates so you need details having having this will help you more what are the details of those estimates so details as how to the estimates of the projects these are not assumptions but having this will help you 
that how did you estimate the project's cash flow whether it is reasonable or not because your net present value is based on this estimates of project cash flow if that changes net present value will change number two you might need details about inflation rate how did they get their future inflation estimate of the future france inflation rate details about how the you need to be you need to be fast in typing make sure at home you practice every day typing at least 30 minutes every day how company derived as estimates everything is estimates here so we are going to use this word estimate a lot it's estimate of future because we don't know by six percent it will grow in france so how did they get that estimate of future france inflation rate and the spot rate because they are predicted wherever the estimates are used you have to write those only in your assumptions wherever estimates are not used you don't have to for example inflation is an estimate spot rate is an estimate uh, cash flow is an estimate then details of the estimate of the machinery's five years scrap value machinery's five years scrap value this is also an estimate so you need details on this also then fourth whether or not the country risk might be a significant factor or not this you have to take into account country risk especially if it's an international project this is an international project you have to take the country risk also so country risk might be significant or not fifth this never miss out how sensitive basically we are talking about sensitivity here sensitivity analysis so how sensitive is the net present value to changes my spelling might be wrong it's fine in some of the key steps okay some of it you can always write for example first one second one about inflation estimates of cash flow sensitivity this you can always talk about any net present value question for assumptions you might be having some additional also depending on the case study that is given to you so that's it for this question and with this we have finished our in uh, investment appraisal topic section b of fm syllabus questions also we have finished from the textbook a revision kit i've already done you can go and check the revision kit uh, solutions for if from the textbook uh, sorry from the revision kit so now we are going to do the financing of the international projects how do you finance and then we are going to end this lecture so now the last part of this lecture is how do you finance the finance uh, the foreign projects there are so many ways through which you can finance these are some main options like you can use the company's free cash flow or finance could be raised from the parents home country which is denominated denominated either in the parents currency or the currency of the subsidiary or finance could be raised in the subsidiary's country finance could be raised in a completely separate country that is not a parent or a subsidiary country now specific foreign currency options for short term funding you can use euro currency loan syndicated loan short term syndicated credit facility multiple option facility euro notes all those things i'll be explaining you in detail what it means euro currency loan syndicated loans and all just know the options and long term funding and basically this financing part of foreign project it is asked for discussion that's why you can say this is full theory we don't have any question on this okay so long term funding or syndicated loan could be long term and euro bond 
Now let us go through each of this in detail. What is Euro currency loan? Euro currency loan is a loan that is given by the bank to a company. Okay, that is denominated in currency other than the country in which they are based. For example, a UK company wants a dollar loan. So they can get it from the euro currency market. It is known as euro dollar loan. Rather than taking pound dollar loans in a pound, they are taking a dollar loan from the bank. That is known as euro currency loan. Then borrowers who are looking for a euro currency loan, okay, euro currency means other than your currency where you are based. It could be any currency. So who are looking for this euro currency loan, they must have a first class credit ratings and they must wish to deal in large sums of money. This euro currency loan is not for some small amount. Not any firm can come and opt for it. You need to be very large firm. You should have a large sum of money that you need to borrow. Then only you can get such loans. And it is, and you must have a first credit, a class credit rating. Then, there are a variety of factors that can influence the decision of whether to borrow in domestic or foreign currency. What are they? Number one, which currency do you require? Number two, cost and convenience, which is less costly. Is it to borrow in domestic or international? And then the size of the loan matters. If the size of the loan is too big, you cannot go for the domestic currency. You have to be a foreign currency. Next is syndicated loan. What is syndicated loan and how different is it from euro currency loan? Syndicated loan means it's just not one bank who is giving you the loan. It's multiple. There are multiple borrowers. Sorry, multiple lenders. That is giving you that amount. Maybe one for one bank, it might be very risky to give you a significant amount of fund. So what happens is there are a lot of lenders who will give money to that one borrower. Let's say you want 10,000. So rather than one bank giving you that 10,000, there will be 10 separate banks who are giving you that 1,000. That is the meaning of syndicated loan. It spreads the risk. Okay. And uh, a syndicated loan is a loan made to a borrower by two or more participants. It could be any number. Okay. It has to be two or more. But the loan agreement is single loan. It's a single loan that you are taking by many borrowers. Syndicated loan market is made up of international lenders. You should know that. And it is originally limited to global firms for acquisition and merger. Mostly this loan is taken if you want to go for an acquisition and merger. It is not for any purpose that you take syndicated loans. Small firms cannot take it. Why is it so? For the following reasons. Number one, the cost. Because when you are taking international internationally the loans are usually cheaper okay being international loans are cheaper second is speed the market is very efficient for very such markets are very efficient for so large loans syndicated loans okay so if you collect it from many borrowers you can easily get the amount very quickly but if you are taking it from one single this thing is very uh, it takes time third is by diversifying, by relying on many borrowers, you are reducing the risk, the foreign exchange rate risk. Now comes the third, that is syndicated credit. What is syndicated credit? It is similar to syndicated loan only. The difference is syndicated credit allows the borrower to borrow fund when it requires. That means whenever they require, you borrow the fund. It does not have to be the full amount that you have agreed. You might not choose to take up the full amount. Okay, and these are very expensive funds, by the way, the syndicator credits and all. It is used commonly to fund takeovers, to refinance debt that is incurred during a takeover. So these are the two reasons. Then we have multiple option facility. For multiple option facility, this is recently developed, okay, this facility for financial instruments. This gives a choice, okay, to the borrower. I mean, what fund they want. Okay, this will combine a panel of banks that gives us, that uh, that provides a credit that is, uh, that is linked to as a reference rate. You can say LIBOR. They will give you a rate. Then, another panel of banks that bids to provide loans when the borrower needs the cash. 
this funds can be in variety of forms and denominated in variety of currencies that's why it's known as hence multiple option options are multiple currencies are variety forms are also many then we are going to euro notes euro note has the following feature number one that firms issue promissory notes which promise to pay the holder a fixed sum of money for a on a specific date in the future or it could be a range of days in the future that means a fixed sum of money is paid in the future in the fixed date that is the meaning of euro notes euro notes should have this feature second feature is it is it could be used for the short or the medium term either issued in single or multiple currencies so medium term loan node is good because medium term loan nodes what happens is it's trying to bring the short term and the long term euro bond together so the in between thing so it breaches the gap between short term issues and longer term euro bonds now we are moving to euro bond euro bond is long term euro euro notes euro currency and euro bond these three are separate terms if it's a bond the moment you hear the euro bond bond with the euro it's a long term long term is 3 to 20 years and it is issued and sold internationally only you cannot get euro bond for domestic it is denominated in single currency not many currency it could be it is fixed or floating interest rate bond it could be any out of this two and this are suitable for organizations that require a large capital sum for long period and the borrowing is not subject to domestic regulations okay but there are risk currency risk is there what is the risk maybe the bond is generating revenue that might be the currency might be different from the bond that the bond is denominated in you must have taken a bond in one currency revenues that you are generating are in another currency so there will be a currency risk now let's summarize everything that we have discussed in this lecture this is a very long lecture i know that's because calculation took most of the time otherwise the discussion part is not so much if you see but what to do calculation needs to be there and Make sure that you do these questions in Excel. It needs to be done since this is the last lecture also under investment appraisal. Uh, it's like basically summary of everything of all investment appraisal techniques. You need to do that. Okay, so the first one is we went through investment appraisal for investment projects. We focused at future exchange rate using interest rate parity or purchasing power parity. That is interest rate or inflation of the two country. Then double taxation. We told that the taxable profit of the foreign company when you are bringing it to the home country you only have to pay the balance you don't pay the entire tax in both the countries only for profit but if it is management charges or royalties you have to pay the full domestic tax intercompany flows transfer price management charges royalties okay remittance restrictions there are some remittance restrictions due to that your tax will change then how did we focus the future exchange rate i told you interest inflation spot and forward rate just look at the relationship at a minute cross rate calculations we calculated where three currencies are given and you want to find the difference between uh, i mean the currency exchange rate of two currency but you have to find it indirectly then impact of taxation remittance restrictions and intercompany cash flows okay we told that projects are always taxed at the higher rate let's say uk have 30% us have 40% total will be 40% so in us if you are paying 40% let's say assume you don't pay any tax in uk or let's say in uk if you are paying 30% you pay the balance 10% in us that's it but always the higher rate transfer pricing transfer pricing you cannot deduct tax from it government does not allow it because they artificially you can increase or decrease transfer pricing based on your tax rate exchange control and ways to overcome them sometimes government tries to control through exchange rate so that you are not able to take as much as uh, profit out of their country but there are ways to overcome them also then we went through net present value analysis saying that there are two methods to calculate net present value either you change the cost of the capital to the foreign currency or you change the cash flow by using the exchange rate we usually go by the second method then we ended with how did we finance foreign projects 
like euro currency loans, indicated loan, euro bond, which is for long term. We went through the feature. Make sure that you go. You don't have to discuss all, but maybe one out of all this, out of the list, one might come, right? You never know. So that's it for this lecture. Thank you for watching. And um, I'm super excited to meet you in the next lecture because we'll be starting a new section that is risk management, all your currency, interest rate, risk management, your financial derivatives, bond, swap, option, forward, future. I know you're very excited for it. And with some discussion, obviously, it's just not theory. You will love it. Risk management is something which is very, I would say it's riskless. Even though this name is risk, it is the riskless. It is the most easiest out of all and very easy to score marks. And you will definitely get one question on that. And also in investment appraisal. So now I have finished investment appraisal. Now it's up to you that you pick up revision kit and start doing questions from it. I've already, I already have a playlist for revision series. The revision kit solutions are done for AFM. It's, I've done it last year, but you can use it this year also because nothing has been changed. So thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture.